for Irish fans or a winter of discontent? For Notre Dame, the 2006 season began with great expectations, but has become a test of character and resolve. As expected, the Irish won their first two games, but then Michigan came to South Bend, and hopes for an undefeated season were crushed. Picked off for an easy touchdown. As we say in the South, this is a whooping. Notre Dame struggles continue the next week against Michigan State. Trailing by 16 points in the fourth quarter and facing a second straight loss, the Irish authored one of the most dramatic comebacks in school history. Win look, throws, it's caught, touchdown Notre Dame. And McKnight comes down with the ball. It's intercepted by Notre Dame. He's in for a touchdown. The Irish have come from behind. The momentum of the Michigan State victory carried through the next two games. But against UCLA, the Irish found themselves on the brink of another loss. That's when the senior leaders rose to the occasion and once again found a way to win and did so in dramatic fashion. With a convincing victory over Navy last week, the Irish are now 7-1. In a season about character and resolve, Notre Dame remains on track for a BCS bowl berth. But as the Irish take the field today against North Carolina, they know there is no room for error. sold out for the 191st consecutive time. You're watching the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff. The North Carolina Tar Heels come to South Bend today for the first time since 1971 to face the Notre Dame Fighting Irish ranked ninth in the BCS rankings. And the Irish filing out of the locker room, touching that play like a champion today plaque. Their All-American quarterback, Brady Quinn, Tom Zivikowski, the safety, getting them fired up. Travis Thomas in there, too. And here come the Irish. Coach John Bunning, who returns to the scene of his greatest game as a linebacker for the University of North Carolina. Seems like winter arrived in South Bend this week. They even had some snow earlier this week. Game time kickoff in the upper 40s. The wind probably not going to be a factor today under cloudy, overcast skies at Notre Dame Stadium. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stadium. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, ready for the Tar Heels and the Irish. And, of course, North Carolina comes in with only one win this season. So Coach Charlie Weiss said with his Irish, it's been trying to impart a sense of urgency with uh, his players and his assistant coaches, everyone involved, as their big favorites today against the Tar Heels. Meanwhile, Pat, Brady Quinn continues to etch his name in the Notre Dame record book. Yeah, how about 35 times? He holds 35 school records now, including throwing 169 consecutive passes 
passes without an intercept, you know. He's got a pretty good supporting cast, consider, you know, deserving some Oscar consideration, including their wide receivers who caught 16 touchdown passes between them. John Carlson, the tight end with 37 catches. How about Darius Walker, a dual threat as a receiver? He's had 300 yard games. And give Coach Weiss some credit. He is, his play calling, his imaginative play calling, is kind of hogged the ball. Plus four in times of possession. And when he gets in the red zone, they score touchdowns. I think that's one of the key six, uh, things for their season. And just when you think you have them stopped on, they go for it on fourth down, converting 17 of them. And, Tom, when you think about those five guys we just mentioned, I think the collection of those five players on offense are the best in the country. I agree with you. And, of course, these are tough times for John Bunning, the former North Carolina linebacker who took his dream job when he was named Tar Heel head coach. He's been there for six years, but only one win this season. A lot of injuries, a tough schedule, and they've just been outmanned many times. And uh, Coach Bunning employing Pat a two-quarterback rotation system. And that tells you they don't have one guy that's really going to step forward. Now, Joe Daly on the left, he'll get his fifth start of the day. But you see he's thrown seven interceptions, just two touchdowns. And every two series, the other quarterback will come in. Cam uh, Saxon, who's uh, thrown eight interceptions, just the four touchdowns. But I think their best offensive player really is their tailback, Ronnie Miguel. He is a tough inside runner, breaks a lot of tackles. He will be a key to their attack. But it's really not, I don't think, about their offense today. It's really about their defense. I think if North Carolina has any chance of winning, this defense is going to have to set the table and create maybe two or three turnovers. Tar Heels did play hard a week ago as they uh, knew their coach wouldn't be back as they took the field against the ranked team, Wake Forest. So they did play hard for their coach, and he hopes they will do the same today. The Tar Heels of North Carolina and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. You've been watching the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff. We're back for the opening kick after these messages from your local NBC station. Back at Notre Dame Stadium for the Tar Heels and the Irish. A lopsided record in this rivalry in favor of Notre Dame. They haven't played since 1975 in Chapel Hill. They haven't played here at Notre Dame Stadium since 1971. And that was the game in which Carolina coach John Bunning had 20 or so tackles as a Carolina <laughs> linebacker. Today's game brought to you in high definition. So the Tar Heels and the Irish. Connor Barth teeing it up for North Carolina. They won the toss, deferred to the second half with Grimes and West deep for Notre Dame. Today's game, the Irish and the Tar Heels brought to you by Vonage. Here's Barth's kick. Kind of a squibbing sideways kick that goes out of bounds. Not a good start for the Tar Heels. So here's Brady Quinn onto the field for the Irish. As Notre Dame comes off a pretty complete game performance against Navy last week. The numbers on Quinn this season, 2,200 yards, 21 touchdowns, just four interceptions. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line where this Adidas starting lineup for the Irish will take the field with Walker, McConnell, McKnight, Samarja, and Carlson, the tight end. And the veteran offensive line of Harris, Santucci, Sullivan, Morton, and the freshman, Sam Young. Quick drop by Quinn. Finds Carlson in the middle of the defense and gains about eight or nine yards on first down. Need a starting lineups now for the Tar Heels defense. And uh, we won't have time for that because uh, here's Notre Dame in the no huddle offense. Boy, has Brady Quinn been good in the no huddle offense this year. They use it, you know, in the two minute marks, but uh, early in the games as well. Well, you know, Coach Weiss said he was trying to impart a sense of urgency. This would be part of that, wouldn't it? Indeed. Draw play. Darius Walker has the first down, but not a whole lot more as he gets about a yard. Rackley, Bynum, Balmer, and Taylor up front for the Tar Heels, the linebackers, Thatch, Worsley, and Mapp. And in the secondary, Watkins, Walker, Taylor, their leading tackler, and Strong. You know, amazing that secondary. Only one interception in the entire season for that Carolina secondary. Hard to believe you get almost that many by accident, yeah. don't you? In eight games. Quinn again to Walker, who finds a spot in the middle of the defense as... Quinn has gone underneath with his first two patches, passes. That gained nine yards with Chase Rice making the tackle. Well, here, here's been part of the problem. Carolina defense is 119 teams in Division 1A. You see where they rank, 93rd total, but 108th in scoring. 
it's been a rough. They have not been able to rush the passer. They've not defended well. And they're not forced enough turnovers. Quinn waiting, waiting for Samarza to come free. And he does inside the 10 down to about the six-yard line. You know, talking to Charlie Weiss yesterday, Tom, remember he kind of gave us a little wink. He felt he could get the ball deep, push the ball up the field because of the safeties of Carolina playing close to the line of scrimmage. Jeff Samarja, you know, he's a big guy at 6'5", but boy, he gets off the line of scrimmage so quickly. Tom, most of those big guys lumber off the line of scrimmage, but they don't seem to be able to jam him much, and that's why he gets down the field so quickly. Gain of 37, first and goal, Irish. Quinn, again, given protection, overshoots McKnight to the back of the end zone. Jeff Samarja, what a career he has had the last two years. He's been a phenomenal All-American receiver last year. See the all-time touchdown reception leaders tied with Derek Mays, each with 22. Well, Derek Mays actually had four touchdown catches in uh, bowl games that didn't count in those days. He was uh, ready to point that out as he was a guest today on our NBCSports.com show. Three game show. Good pushing up top. Pass to anyway by McKnight for six. Yeah, that's that's too easy. I just mentioned the big pushing up at the top of the screen. And uh, down there inside the 15, you just got to play it a lot tighter. Look at the cushion for McKnight up at the top. That's his 10th touchdown catch of the year. And the Irish always seem to put you on the heels with that opening drive. They, they take the opening drive. They generally score touchdowns. You're always playing, feeling like you're playing uphill. I thought that pass was just merely nicked a little bit. At the might, line have been, might have been a little knuckleball. Yes, but, uh, uh, target. Either that or it's a lame duck, huh? Carl Joya kicks the extra point through. He's now hit 31 of 32 this season. So on the opening drive, the Irish get a 4-5 performance from Quinn. Notre Dame football is brought to you by the new 2007 Lincoln MKZ. Life's calling. Where to next? Lincoln, reach higher. By Comcast. Watch more high-def movies with HD from Comcast, where HD movies live. By Xerox, helping your business grow with technology, document management, and consulting services. And by Charles Schwab. Looking for a winning investment strategy? Talk to Chuck, Charles Schwab. From Notre Dame Stadium, Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson, Raymond McKnight on the phone upstairs after catching the touchdown pass. And for Raymond on the season, that's his 10th touchdown reception. He has 17 in his career as the Irish put together their quickest opening touchdown drive of the season. He's got 10, and Smarch on the other side has seven touchdown catches. Tate and Williams, the deep men for Carolina, fielding this kick. This is Tate. Wrapped up as he crosses the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Let's go back and have a look at the touchdown, Tom. Watch the defensive back, Jerome Strong. Watch, watch. He is actually four yards deep in the end zone when the ball is thrown. Just an easy, quick out. And just so deep, there's just no chance when you have a strong as arm as Brady Quinn does, even that ball, even though that ball kind of wobbles <laughs> Yeah, a it might bit. be strong, but I thought it was deflected. It's not. It's just a, a lame duck. But he got it right out in front of the receiver, so the defensive backs had no chance of reacting. Style points don't really matter, no, do they? Not, uh, except what, ice dancing? <laughs> <laughs> so here's Joe Daly getting the start at quarterback for the Tar Heels. They expect to alternate them every two series. Play action fake. Daly is going to be sacked. Abby Amiri. And that's his that's number nine, yeah, right? Yeah, and you know, I was, I was talking to Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator was saying hey we have to have a plan for Victor Abbey Amiri you just can't let him come one-on-one -on -one. well he came one-on-one -on -one that time untouched. on the very first play untouched yeah at least they said they were going to have two guys on him that time they had zero guys on him and an easy sack for Victor Abbey Amiri among the nation's leaders in sacks with nine as we pointed out and that was for a loss of nine second down and long for the Tar Heels and Duke Gray shows a blitz, then backs out of it. And handoff to McGill. Roddy McGill, who is a talented runner, averaging 4.1 yards per carry. Crum and Zibikowski, the tackle, as we look at our starting lineups, brought to you by Adidas. Saw the numbers on Joe Daly, including those seven interceptions would have been costly. There's McGill. 
talented running back, as we said. Jesse Holly is a very good receiver as well. And the blockers are Chacos Gray, Lenahan, Darity, and Lemming. Third and long. From the shotgun, Joe Daly. Pretty good protection. He whips it downfield, and it's deflected and nearly intercepted off the hands of Brooks Foster. And in Dukeway had a shot at it, but it falls incomplete. Yeah, you know, Joe Daly just trying to make something happen when you're, you know, third and forever. And in Dukeway almost gets his hand out, but really double coverage. Once again, that's why they've actually thrown, you know, 15 interceptions. They've been forced in third and longs. They've had to chuck it down the field. When they had a punt block last week against Wake Forest, it was the very first punt attempt by Woodridge. And as you see, returned for a touchdown. Woodridge will kick it to Tom Zibikowski. He did come after him, but uh, able to get it away. Woodridge, fair catch called for by Zibikowski, who barely was able to snatch it as it hit the turf. A 36-yard punt with no return. Irish will take over as Daly discusses his first possession. 7-0. Uh, each team has had one drive. Notre Dame scored and leads seven to nothing. But let's go back to that very first drive. There's a talk about all the weapons they have on offense. John Carlson, the tight end, catches the first pass, and then the Darius Walker, the two-way threat, and then the deep ball to Samarja, and then the quick out to the other wide receiver for his tenth touchdown catch. I mean, Charlie Weiss really mixes it up. I mean, he's a very, very tough guy to defend. All his guys, he makes sure all his players get a chance to touch the ball. Brady Quinn was four or five on that six play drive to four different receivers. You, know, you just can't focus on one guy when you play against Notre Dame. Great toss to Samarja. Carolina defended Brady that well. It'll be Jermaine Strong given credit for the first hit. Today's first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. Tom, we talked about just a few moments ago. This Carolina defense is going to really have to try to set the table if they're going to have a chance to win it. Forcing a couple of turnovers. You know, Brady Quinn's protected the ball pretty well the last few weeks. Second and six. Carlson will have a first down. A slant to Carlson. Chase Rice knocks him down after he picked up the first. A gain of 11. John Carlson from little, what, Litchfield, Minnesota. Population 6,500, a little slant to him. Well, he is a dependable guy over the middle of the field, and one of those tight ends that, even though he's 6'6", 250, can get deep. Well, and as Charlie Weiss says, he's able to excel in all phases of a tight end's play. He, he's a good blocker. He's a deep threat, dependable receiver uh, yeah. underneath as well as McKnight. Can't latch onto that one. Well, th think about John Carlson. This stadium with over 80,000 each week is about 12 times the size of his hometown. Well, and he stepped into the shoes of Anthony Fasano yeah. as well this season. And what has he done? Well, he has become perhaps uh, unknowingly and uh, not well recognized around the country perhaps, but one of the best tight ends in college football. Yeah, he could well, uh, well end up being an All-American tight end. Brady Quinn stands in the pocket and then a sack. Big play by E.J. Wilson for his second sack of the season for the Tar Heels. Good off the corner rush by E.J. Wilson, the freshman who comes in really on nickel downs and rushes off the corner, number 92, off the corner, kind of throws his man away, uh, set Sam Young, and then because of good coverage downfield, Brady, Brady Quinn held on the ball a little bit too long. You know, the interesting thing, too, about Brady Quinn, he doesn't fumble the ball much when he gets sacked. That's a good rush by E.J. Wilson. Which John Bunning appreciates that play from his defense, setting up this third and long for the Irish. From the shotgun, Brady Quinn rolls, looks downfield. There's a flag down. And a pass defended and knocked down at the last minute. Boy, that Carolina uh, defensive series looked good as that was J Jacoby Watkins that deflected the pass intended for Samarja. Yeah. It's going to be holding against the Irish, but terrific coverage by Jacoby Watkins. Talking to Marvin Sanders, defensive coordinator, say Watkins is a guy that's got tremendous speed and can run with anybody. Today's officiating crew. Number 50 the offense. Penalties refused. Fourth down. Headed by that man, Tom Zamorski. It's an Atlantic Coast Conference crew. A good defensive series for the Tar Heels. Jeff Price comes in the pot. Santucci guilty of the hold. He's number 50. Right there in the middle of the screen. 
takedown. So Jeff Price, who is averaging 45.3 yards a punt this season, will take it, kick it toward Tate. He didn't punt last week at all. And a little out of practice, he hits the end zone. That's only the 11th time, or the third time this season he's had a touchback. And plus, remember, after the game, you can see Coach Weiss's live post-game press conference. That's all at NBCSports.com. Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense. Abby Amiri already has a sack. Thomas, Crum, and Brockington. Crum has become the leading tackler for the Irish this season. And Lambert, Zibikowski, and Duque and Richardson in the secondary. Well, Mike Richardson really had a solid year for the Irish at corner. Plays their boundary corner. So North Carolina with a first down after a good defensive series. This is Daly still at quarterback. Finds his receiver Rome out of the backfield. Bobby Rome, a redshirt freshman from Norfolk, tackled by Crum and Zibikowski. So it's a bittersweet time for John Bunting, who got his dream job. He, of course, played at North Carolina, played in the NFL for 11 years, won a Super Bowl, got his dream job when he came to North Carolina and thought things were going in the right direction, and then this season the bottom fell out. You know, there's no one that loves Carolina more than he. As a matter of fact, in all those NFL years, he wore a Carolina blue T-shirt under his shoulder pads every single game. Draw play. McGill. Nice run by McGill who picks up a first down with Travis Thomas holding on for dear life. That's a gain of 11. Well, Ronnie McGill is a strong guy who just breaks a lot of tackles. Now, he doesn't break a lot of necessary 30 or 40 yard runs, but he breaks a lot of tackles there. Both three of them as Ronnie McGill dragged two guys past the first down marker. This is the kind of runs he had last week. Actually, the last couple of games, Ronnie McGill has run very well, but particularly well last week against Wake Forest when he ran for over 100 yards. From Clover, South Carolina, his whole family, it seemed, went to the University of South Carolina. He cast his lot in Chapel Hill. Fake it to him this time. Bailey evading the rush. Whips downfield. Had a man open. Hamlet is tight end, but he couldn't hold on. Uh, Joe Daly's been pretty athletic back there. You know, they keep rolling to Victor Abbey side. One thing, they might want to roll like, away from him because he just seems to be in the backfield so much. Play action fake to McGill. It was a corner blitz by Lambert. Makes Lambert miss. Gets the ball off before Abbey Amiri hits him. Just a little bit behind the tight end, John Hamlet. Second and ten. Nice uh, movement in the pocket by Joe Daly. But, you know, first and second down are really important for the Carolina offense. They just can't afford to get themselves in too many third and tens. The problems the offense has had this season for the Tar Heels. Here's McGill trying to turn the corner. He does it a big way. Zivikowski chasing. Finally puts him out of bounds. Big run by Ronnie McGill. Yeah, nice call by Frank Sinetti, the offensive coordinator. He has absolutely mixed it up. He said to us yesterday, we've got to be productive on first and second down. We can't just run, run, throw. We've got to mix it up. So a throw on first down. They come right back. Two tight end set. Andre Barbour, left tight end, really kind of seals the corner. And then Ronnie McGill seizes that corner for the big play. Zib Bukowski trying to strip the ball. McGill holds on. That's a 35-yard gain. The play call by Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator. Okay, that guy's got a good offensive mind. They had struggled this year, but he did it really well at Fresno State prior to coming to Carolina. Take to McGill. Daly chased. Got away again. Downfield has a man, and it is caught. caught. Knicks got a foot down and a big reception for the Tar Heels. It goes for 21. How about Joe Daly? I, I tell you one thing though, Victor Abbey Miri, they're gonna have to solve him because he it was in Daly's face one more time. But a very mobile Joe Daly gets Victor Abbey Miri to miss. Crum was there too. Actually had two guys who had clean shots on. But a very mobile Joe Daly, and then a pretty good throw, and then Akeem Nix dots the eye. He's got, a, he's got a pretty good drive put together. And he has a first down. McGill hit in the backfield. There's a flag down as Landry with that quick move off the ball that we have come to oh see so often. Yeah, you're right. Derek Landry is so fast off the ball. Plays inside defensive tackle. 
for the Irish and he and Trevor Laws have really kind of sealed the middle for the Irish this season. Tom's wanting to get it straight before he gives us the call. Holding 64 of the offense. The penalty's refused. Second down. That's Scott Lenahan, the center. You know, Derek Landry causes a lot of, uh, of holding calls just because he's so quick off the ball. You think if I don't hold him, he's right here in the middle. If I don't hold him, and he was definitely held. He got his money's worth. You know, my quarterback or running back are going to get killed. Well, he held him, and he still got hurt. So decline the penalty. And it makes it second down and 15. Still, Bailey engineering a pretty good drive for the Tar Heels. They send Holly in motion. Take to McGill. Beatty rolls, setting up a screen. It's complete. Okay. And then penetration from Randy Dukeway to catch McGill when it looked like there wasn't a single dark blue shirt in the area. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Yeah, the ball, so yeah, the ball was a little bit late, maybe a little bit low than a hustling. Shinningham and Dukeway makes the play. You know, good play calling, good sequencing of plays, run, run, run. A little bit late and then underthrown. He has to slow down. If he doesn't have to slow down, he maybe gets in the end zone, but a hustling and Duke Way makes the stop. I think Daly had trouble identifying him at first, uh, and then by the time he got the ball to him, uh, he's the guy in the white jersey, <laughs> number 25. But the, you had yeah. to throw it. There were some blockers out there, too, and you have to find the right one. Yeah. Third down. Daly stands in the pocket into the end zone. Holly for the touchdown. Terrific answer by Joe Daly. And Tom, I say, why take Joe Daly out yeah. now? He's he, scheduled to come out next series. But Joe Daly had a terrific drive. Scramble, scramble, and hang, hung in there in the pocket. And throws the touchdown to Holly against the other number nine, Tommy Zibikowski. Good catch by Jesse Holly. Second touchdown catch of the year for Holly. 12, 12 yards. He's had 27 straight games now with a reception and 114 in his Carolina career as Barth knocks the extra point through. Holly catches the touchdown pass from Joe Daly, and Daly celebrates an excellent Tar Heel drive to tie it at 7. 7-7 seven, seven game in the first quarter at Notre Dame after Holly catches the touchdown pass from Daly to knot it for Carolina. Holly with the 12-yard catch on that Lincoln scoring drive that covered 80 yards in eight plays in just under three minutes. A couple of big plays by North Carolina. And uh, you see Sexton as Daly puts on the headset. Sexton now, Cam Sexton, is scheduled to play the next series at quarterback for North Carolina. We'll see if they stick to that pregame plan as Barth has it teed up for the Tar Heels with Grimes and West the deep man. Sidewinder to Grimes. He hesitates, stumbled a bit, and then slammed down at about the 26 yard line. Let's take a look at our Lincoln scoring drive for the Tar Heels. Well, it was an eight-play drive. We're going to take a look at three of them. Joe Daly did a lot of it with his feet. And then next, a nice little catch. Kept the foot in bounds. Sequencing the plays. The screen pass to McGill for a nice little game. And then the touchdown throw and the terrific catch by Jesse Holly to even the score. And there's Daly who engineered that beautiful drive for the Heels. Well, Notre Dame, you remember, just on their first possession, marched down the field for an easy score, but then second possession, Carolina's defense held. Third possession for the Irish. Swing it to Walker. And Darius Walker, tackled by Chase Rice. Well, you know, give John, John Bunning some credit and his staff for getting his team ready to play. That's the 100th career catch for Darius Walker. Set the uh, receiving record last year with 43. Broke it this year, but now has 100 career receptions. Among the national leaders in receptions by a running back. He was up here as a receiver. Empty backfield. Carlson picks up the first down. Tackled by... Darrell Mapp. That's the third catch of the day by John Carlson, the tight end. Just a little quick one. You no, know, it's just such a, you know, such a big target, and you know he catches those little ones, but he can catch long ones as well. Had a 62-yard touchdown catch earlier in the season. That would win for 10. Quinn behind 
Jordan Samarja an incomplete he had double coverage. See Brady Quinn looking to the sideline saying hurry up coach. <laughs> He you know, looks at his arm for the play call. You know, the last five games, it kind of just seemed like carbon copies for Brady Quinn. He seems like he throws three touchdowns and doesn't throw interceptions. And it almost makes it look too easy sometimes. He's got a remarkable career, and particularly the last five weeks. McKnight. Underthrown, incomplete. You know, that, uh, even though Brady Quinn, uh, there was an incompletion thrown off his back foot. John Bunning was talked to us yesterday. He said, "Hey, you know, we haven't faced a quarterback like Brady Quinn, who has all the throws, even those deep outs, those deep comeback outs, which he cover can 50 yards yeah. or so." He said, "And that's where you see the the strength." Well, again, the Carolina defense did another good job on second down, forcing a third and ten. And when people have given Notre Dame some problems this year, they've had a, a couple of moments, it's when you forced them into those third and longs. Empty backfield, shotgun. Notre Dame has only run twice. They've thrown 13, now 14 times. As Quinn finds Carlson again. He's been the featured man in this first quarter. He's inside the 30 on a gain of 28 yards. Yeah, fourth catch of the day. He had 28 yards in receptions before that one. Then he gets down the field. You see what a what a valuable tight end can be who can run up the field and catch the ball down the field as a deep threat. And Brady Quinn was saying to us a couple of weeks ago, you know, I consider him a wide receiver. He gets bigger than my other guys, but he's a wide receiver. And tough for a linebacker to cover, to cover as was the case there. Carlson, four catches, 57 yards. Walker. McKnight got a good block at the point of attack, and he gets nine yards on first down. With that left side, Ryan Harris, Dan Santucci on the left side of the offensive line did a pretty good job as well. Watch those guys up here on the left side. Good block by McConnell as well, but Harris and Santucci just kind of sealed the inside. And then McKnight at good block downfield. So everybody participated in that run. Horsley caught him from behind. There is Walker. Last four games, 455. 627. Fake for Walker. Quinn will be sacked back to the 30-yard line. That's Shelton Bynum. Yeah, what did Charlie Weiss say to us yesterday about Shelton Bynum? He's their best player of the front seven, Shelton Bynum. Moved him kind of in a, into a, a nose tackle position. Number 75, he's kind of spin, spun right off of John Sullivan. Good coverage again downfield that helped him get to the quarterback. Yeah, off of Morton, excuse me, it was off of Bob Morton, not Sullivan. And Bynum gets his second sack of the season. The senior from Ellenwood, Georgia, saxophone player, played a little tune on Brady Quinn that time. <laughs> he has played well or better every single week. Play action fake. Quinn has a man open. It's McKnight. Knocked down after picking up the first down at the 12-yard line. Jermaine Strong with the coverage a little loose, 16 yeah. yards. Yeah, you're right, a little loose. Maybe it was loose on the touchdown. You can hardly see Jermaine Strong in the picture. Gets him absolutely turned around. Now that That's a matchup that if you're Charlie Weiss, I think you want to keep working that one. So first down for the Irish. They come with three tight ends now. Carlson, Freeman, and Rulin. And Walker, the running back. Pitch to Walker on the sweep. Good penetration into the backfield with the Carolina defense as Cooter Arnold comes up to make the stop from a free safety spot. Yeah, good hustle play that by that time by number two, Cooter Arnold. Cooter was actually a starting running back last opening their season as a running back against Georgia Tech. Just some injuries and other things. They moved him to free safety. Boy, the Irish have been good down here. 23 touchdowns. They consider it an absolute failure if they have to uh, attempt a field goal. That's what Coach Weiss says. If you keep the sacks wrong, you should keep touchdowns in the red zone, not scores in the red zone. Don't want to settle for a field goal. Ben's pass. Who else? Carlson fighting his way for the touchdown. Okay, Tom, so you say I'm going to take away Jeff Samarsha, or I'm going to take away against Raymond McKnight. Who's going to guard the tight end in here? 
And again, he's, he's, you see how quickly he got off the ball and he avoided the defensive lineman and the linebacker. And then, you know, because he was on the top of a Carolina defender, he right. just kept spinning his way into the end zone. Knapp and Walker couldn't get him to the turf before he had uh, broken the plane in the end zone. Joya's extra point is good. John Carlson, an 11-yard touchdown. It's his third touchdown catch of the season as he fights into the end zone. And Charlie Weiss and the Irish retake the lead. 147 left opening quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish ranked ninth in the BCS rankings. Tight end John Carlson just catching a touchdown pass from Brady Quinn. Quinn's second touchdown toss of this first quarter. John Carlson had seven catches all of last year, has had five so far today. Ryan Burkhardt, Ryan Burkhardt has it teed up with Tate and Williams deep for the Tar Heels. Kickoff from Burkhart. Taken by Tate. Oh, Walker knocked at a uh, defender of the uh, special teams tackle right into the carrier, Junior Jabby, who has earned himself a starting spot on special teams by being the show player of the week. Hey, how about the second effort here by John Carlson? You know, he really should have been stopped on about the two. Just kept churning and churning and turning and gets himself into the end zone. I mean, well, did just about everything on that drive. Caught some short ones, caught a long one, and then the determination for the last two yards. And there's Daly, who engineered the last Tar Heel drive on the sideline, true to their plan, Cam Sexton. Cam Sexton, one ninety from Lauren, North Carolina, handing off to McGill. Always tough to bring down. Zibikowski and Crum finally get it. So they do switch quarterbacks, bringing in Sexton, who has hit 42% of his passes, 80, 840 yards, with four touchdowns and eight interceptions. And Daly, who drove the Tar Heels down the field last time to tie the game, is on the headset. Well, Cam Sexton talked to the coaches. They say, you know, he's a gifted guy, but he's just forced the ball too many times. That's led to the interceptions. And this says they've been behind a lot this year, too. Drop play handoff. Nothing there for McGill. Bounces off with the attackers. Crum couldn't get it down. And finally, Richardson knocks him to the turf with a tough hit. Didn't wrap him up, but he is tough to bring down. Near the end of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game from each team. And to honor their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Chevy, an American revolution. Well, third and eight. Uh, how would you block Victor Abiyamiri this time? With about three guns. Yeah, exactly. Victor Abiyamiri has been a... And uh, they will call that play to start the second quarter. They'll let the final seconds tick away to end the first quarter. Carolina sticking with the favorite Irish. It's 14-7. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Vonage. Football resting just across the Carolina 25-yard line as the Tar Heels facing a third and seven. Sexton chased, got away once, but not twice, and is sacked by Chris Strong. Chris Strong, who uh, brought his musical talents to South Bend, he's taking a guitar class, he told us. That's twice Maurice Crum for the middle linebacker position has come absolutely cleanly. Chris Fromm just kind of falls off his guy to make the sack with some help from Derek Landry. And that was caused by a blitz by Maurice Crum. Crum uh, disrupting right in the center of things. Zipikowski awaits the world reach punt. Almost got it. Yeah, they came after it again. Not quite. And it'll roll dead and great field position for the Irish. They'll take over at their own 42-yard line. Down. And Brady Quinn back out of the field. Here's what his coach said about the All-American quarterback. 
I think Brady Quinn's attributes on the football field don't even compare closely to what he is off the football field. He's he's beloved by his peers. He's well mannered. I mean, everyone everyone likes Brady Quinn, and very seldom in the in this game of football do you have, you find an athlete that everyone likes off the field as much as they like on the field. And having spoken to him frequently in the past uh, four years, we would echo those sentiments. Darius Walker picking his way forward, short gain, a couple of yards. You know, Brady Quinn, you know, the reason a lot of guys like him, he, he throws all those receivers. <laughs> <laughs> I know Carlson McKnight, Samarja, and Walker all like him, but you see the distribution and why it, it, they're so hard to defend. You, you can't just take away one guy. Even Carlson as a tight end is a deep threat. He's got 68 yards in his five receptions. You know, we we're talking to Bob uh, Morton, the offensive guard, yesterday about Brady Quinn. He said, what do you like about him best? He said, you know, he's the same guy that he was four years ago. Hasn't changed at all. Walker. Spinning to midfield. Taken down by Darrell Mapp. Nice conversation with Bob Morton yesterday, the senior from McKinney, Texas. Kind of began the season with a heavy heart time, as we know, his father died, Bob, Father Bob. And he puts those uh, wristbands on his ankles with his father's initials, and then he says burns off excess energy, and the students respond. This is before the game when he's in the end zone getting the uh, students fired up and firing himself up as well. He says burning off some of that excess energy and uh, the big redhead. Loves to talk, doesn't he? He entertained yeah. us for a while yesterday. Interesting guy. Pumped once, Brady Quinn and rolls to safety. He's going to duck his head and duck out of bounds for the first down with Map in pursuit. First down. first down, Irish on a scramble by Brady Quinn. Yeah, another good decision not to throw the ball. When you think about Brady Quinn, you talk about his arm strength and his leadership skills. We were just doing it. You know, Carlson was taken away. The Tar Heels took him away. He didn't force it. He got the ball out of bounds. Good little shot, too. Yeah, he did, but strong enough to bounce right up. Those are the things that uh, the NFL scouts yeah. have noted about Brady Quinn. He's absolutely ready for the next level, there's no doubt. Fake to Walker. Quinn with all day to throw. But nobody opened. And then got rid of it just as he is taken down. That, that has to be very good coverage, right? He had, what, they counted one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. There's a whole uh, lot of Mississippis, and it's going to be called yeah. grounding because he was not outside the tackle box. We'll have a look at this coverage. It's really just a three deep linebackers, but coverage there. This guy looks a little open right there, but Brady doesn't see him. It's Carlson, the tight end, who was open. And then the grounding call. Potential grounding against Notre Dame. That's lost down. Spot the foul. Second down. And that was the correct call. Yeah, absolutely. Good coverage by Carolina. They've actually put a pretty good pass rush on Brady Quinn with those four defensive linemen, Bynum and Taylor and Bomber well, and Rackman. Well, if you have to say that the spottiest unit the Irish have had all season has been their offensive line. The yeah, yeah, well at times, not so well others. Remember UCLA, the last home game, sacked him five times here. Twice they said the offensive line as a group had their best practice ever this week. And they give him time in and he finds Samarja. And Samarja on his way down the sideline and pushed out of bounds. Watkins got him out, but it went for 48 yards. The offensive line gave Quinn time, and he spotted his All-American receiver. Okay, so you take away John Carlson. Then what happens? You leave Jeff Samarsha open. A little square in route. Again, I think you have to attack him more at the line of scrimmage, but he just eludes the, the jam at the line of scrimmage, and then so tough to bring down. And there's Derek Mays on the sideline feeling a, a little nervous right now because Jeff Samarja with one more touchdown catch will set the all time Notre Dame record. He and Derek are tied currently with 22 touchdown receptions. Quinn will pitch to Walker trying to use his blockers hit in the backfield and then swaps for a loss on the play again good defense. Malik Brown led the charge for the Tardians. Malik Brown off as a defensive end, got the, his hands around him first. And then Worsley, the linebacker, finished him off. And this is where Notre Dame has been so tough. We talk about how good they are when they get in the red zone scoring touchdowns. Pointing 
to the middle linebacker. Short drop. Fires to McKnight for his second touchdown catch of the game. Again, too much cushion from the Carolina defenders. Well, and actually, they tried to double him, but they didn't jam him at the line of scrimmage. They were going short and then over the top on Raymond McKnight. But they didn't jam it at the line of scrimmage, Tom. Just, again, a little too easy for Raymond McKnight. But that's by design. I mean, that is awfully good design by Charlie Weiss and his staff to get guys that wide open in the end zone. Second touchdown of the game, the 18th of his career. He also ranks in the top five all time at Notre Dame. He'll catch Derek Mays, too. <laughs> McKnight with two in one and a half quarters. A third touchdown pass of the game for Brady Quinn. 21-7, Irish. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's forward. Toyota moving forward. By Sirius Satellite Radio, the best radio on radio. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? And by Vonage. Twenty-one-seven Irish. The base drummers uh, getting a workout in this first half, as is the Leprechaun. Uh, the last touchdown, the third of the game, and thrown by Brady Quinn. And you know they actually tried a double cover. Uh, Raymond McKnight, but watch the corner strong slip didn't get his hands on him. The safety doesn't get there on time. The safety expects him to get jammed to the line of scrimmage. The, he slips easy touchdown again. You, you, you're the coach. And you say we got the right defense called guy slips touchdown. You know, what do you do? There's the scoring drive for the Irish 57 yards in seven plays the third touchdown pass for Brady Quinn. Burkhart will kick it off, and the deep men again, Tate and Williams. And this will be Williams to the 30-yard line. Well, we told you about John Bunning, the North Carolina coach, who had his greatest game as a Carolina linebacker the last time the Tar Heels came here, 1971. Here's what he said. For 35 years and, and two weeks, approximately, is when I played here. Uh, and uh, played probably my best game uh, in college here. Had a lot of tackles. I'm excited about going out there and on the field again. And his sister is here. His uh, daughter was uh, just two years old, did he say, when uh, he played here in 1971. She's back for today's game, his daughter. And uh, John Bunning, his wife, is also coach in the... Uh, they bleed Carolina blue. It's been a tough saying. Fumble, but recovered by Carolina. Abby and Mary once again was all over Cam Sexton. I don't think you can roll into him, Tom. You know, I think you need to roll away from Victor Abby and Mary. They, they keep, you know, rolling right into him, and he's right into the quarterback's face. And another thing they ought to do is block him. <laughs> they didn't touch him again. That's yeah. twice he's come free, and twice he's had a sack. Ten now on the season for Abby and Mary. Jacos, the left tackle, did a good job of you know, battling Chris Fromm for the football. Tar Heels retain possession, but it's second and 21, as you see. Third sack for the Irish, two of them by Abby Amiri. McGill slips, nowhere to go. Swamped at the 15-yard line. I'm guessing Derek Landry's in the bottom of that pile. Just a guess. He's Maybe Abby Amiri, too, huh? Yeah. Some <laughs> There's the two inside guys. Laws, Laws and, and Landry. And Landry. You know, between those two inside guys, coming into today's game, look at the jump that, that uh, Landry gets. It's incredible. But between those two guys, they had 80 tackles, seven sacks, and 13 and a half tackles for losses. They just kind of really eaten up the inside. You know, usually those guys have to protect linebackers, but they're making plays themselves. Abby Amiri was being held, and he just dragged the guy along with him and got onto the top of the pile, too. Well, better to hold him than to leave him alone. <laughs> Again, pressure, and Sexton's pass a little too tall intended for Hakeem Nix. And incomplete, it'll be a punting situation. So Sexton in his two series hasn't gotten much done. Yeah, see, you know, Joe Daly was hot. Led the team to a drive, and, you know, I just, uh, you know, he was hot, but they, they had a plan. They're going to stick with it and try to drop it in to Nix. Not a chance. 
Woodridge to punt. And they tried to block the last two punts of Carolina. Been fairly close, but haven't gotten it yet. Zibikowski, this time they'll set up the return. Zibikowski backtracks. Got away from the first two. And the third, but the fourth takes him down at about the 46 yard line of the Irish. Special teams play by Thatch. 21 7, Irish. And looking ahead to that Sunday night football matchup, not only the two marquee quarterbacks, but the two marquee teams in the AFC. Indianapolis 7 and 0, and the Patriots have lost only once at 6 and 1. That's tomorrow night, Sunday night football here on NBC. Well, Tom Brady is still 11 touchdowns and just three interceptions against the Colts in his career. He shares with Brady Quinn the uh, Charlie Weiss yeah. mentoring, and they've uh, talked a few times on the telephone. An affection, Charlie. Play action fake, and Quinn, give it all day, finds Samarja to the 20 yard line. For what makes Jeff Samarja so hard to defend? Well, a lot of things. You've seen it today. But how about the size and the strength? 6'5", almost 220 pounds. He's acrobatic. He's got good speed. Gets off the line of scrimmage very easily and quickly. Makes guys miss. Good vision. Cutting ability. And then I think a nose to the end zone, which starts at about the 40-yard line for Jeff Samarja. This guy's got it all. And there's his father, Sam, who uh, said in our pregame show that, that he's actually going to play both sports or try to play both football and baseball next year. Professionally. I say, why not? Here's a reverse. McKnight. Quinn's going to get you a block. <laughs> is that a block? Well, I thought it was going to be. It turned out to be it was a little fake. Yeah. <laughs> It, he is a quarterback after all. Yeah. Brian Rackley makes the tackle for Carolina. Well, just you know, just one more element in their offensive scheme. They run a reverse for a touchdown earlier this year. There's Quinn. Brady Quinn. Well, they got a little push. Counted a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Got him five yards. Just one more thing you have to worry about defending from the playbook of Charlie Weiss. Yeah, you know, he's fearless, he's innovative. He's got some pretty good guys to yeah. give a chance, right? Helps, he? Walker. To the outside. Spinning to the five-yard line. First down and goal for the Irish. D.J. Walker stopped him, but he gained nine. Well, Darius Walker, they, they run a lot of slow developing plays, a lot of draw plays to Darius Walker because he has such good vision and a feel of, of making the right cut. You talk to his offensive linemen, they say, you know, you watch the tape the next day, he always seems to make the right cut. And now in the top five, as he takes over the fifth spot, closing in on... 2,700 rushing yards. You know, of, of all those guys ahead of him, he's a more complete player in the sense of a very good receiver as well. Well, the all-time leading receiver as a running back in Irish history. Yeah. Bynum stopping Walker at that time with a penalty marker down. Just over seven minutes to go here in the second quarter. Number 50 in the offense. Ten yards the previous spot. Still first down. Dan Santucci whistled for holding for the second time today. Oh, that's not going to make uh, Bruno's after the game a happy spot. <laughs> <laughs> number 50 right in here. Left guard. Yeah, hooked up a little bit. I think they could have could have been a no call, but means it's uh, first and goal back at the 15. Now timeout taken by Notre Dame. Five seconds on the play clock. Irish call their first timeout, leading 21-7. 21-7 Irish, Notre Dame football presented to you by Vonage. Irish at the 15-yard line, first and goal. They've been in the red zone three times now in four possessions, three touchdowns. Single coverage and Samarja up at the top. James Aldridge, the freshman running back, is the tailback. Take it to him. Quinn still has it. Going for the end zone. Caught. 
Carlson again written out of no an incomplete uh, yeah. incomplete he was bobbling it as he went out of bounds with uh, a defender Kareem Taylor on his back. Yeah Kareem Taylor did a terrific job of forcing the bobble. First time I've really seen some defensive back take it away from Carlson had it for a second. Just stripped okay. him yeah terrific terrific coverage by Kareem Taylor. Doesn't Taylor know the Breeders Cup is down at Churchill Downs <laughs> Road. <laughs> Carlson it's like, bluegrass here, isn't it? <laughs> in, his, in his helmet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quinn now has hit 14 of 20 for 243 yards in the three touchdowns. Quinn for the end goal. Carlson. No, Samarja. Samarja. Came loose. Incomplete. You know, he, he seems upset because that's one he should have caught, caught. And they have thrown that pass about five times this year. Three touchdowns, I believe, at least. Had it, just didn't come down with it. Good coverage again by Watkins. Sam thought he had the record. No. <laughs> From jubilation to disappointment. Yeah. Tough crowd. I mean, you know, he made a pretty good effort. Empty backfield, five wide receivers here. Third down and goal from the Carolina 15. Usually a three-step drop when they run this formation. One, two, three. Complete. Anastasio. Tackle. Through a crowd. D.J. Walker the first to get it. Good tackle by the free safety, D.J. Walker. Had Anastasio one-on-one -on -one and forces the, maybe the field goal attempt. Remember Notre Dame was run a fake field goal, but good play by Walker. Second catch of the season by Anastasio, but didn't get much. So Joya is on for the field goal attempt. As you see, six of 10 this season. If the team has scores a lot of points, over 30 a game, they don't attempt too many field goals. 27 yards, this time no touchdown in the red zone, barring the fake. It's a field goal attempt. Joya, 27, boots it up and through. Well, Weiss had to settle for a field goal, but does add to his lead. It makes it 24-7. Heroes is the hit of the new season, and Monday there's an all-new episode. Check it out yourself. That's Heroes, Monday at 9, 8 Central, here on NBC. Six thirty-three to go. First half. Iris just uh, notching a field goal to make it 24-7. Well, Brady Quinn's thrown for 250 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Still six minutes left. Tate Williams, the deep man for Burkhart's kickoff. Tate, and then handing off. A oh, didn't hand off. Faked it. He still has it, and he's still running. And Tate burst down the sideline. To the 20, to the 10, and the Carolina touchdown. <laughs> Terrific movement by John Bunny. You know, just a fake reverse, but really, you know, actually it was a, just a strong run by Brandon Tate, who led the ACC in kick returns a year ago. Brandon Tate fakes the reverse to person. I thought he'd handed yeah. it off. No, they, he breaks three tackles, four tackles. Lambert misses him. Gets, picks up a good block, but broke four tackles before outrunning the Irish into the end zone. So good special teams play by the Tar Heels. 90 yards for the score, and Barth will attempt the extra point. He took it 75 yards after contact, and there is a blocked point after. Derek Landry, I think, was able to block the point after attempt. Okay, you know. Brandon Tate had a terrific year last year, led the ACC in kickoff returns, and this year hasn't had a big one yet. But watch how many tackles he breaks. You can see one, two, three there, and then a couple more here, here. So five tackles he breaks and gets in the end zone, and then out races the defender of the end zone. So, you know, good special teams play. Two. Lambert had the last full shot at him. Picked up a very nice block. And 
know, you get back in the game in a couple different ways. Maybe defense causes a turnover. Maybe you, you get an interception. They haven't had many this year. Or your special teams do it. And a celebrating Jesse Holly <laughs> on the sideline. He scored the first Carolina yeah. touchdown. And now Tate with a 90-yard return and a little trickery to set it up. And then some excellent running by Tate. A great tackle after tackle. And suddenly it's a 24-13 game. Extra point was blocked. You know, like I was saying earlier, give John Bunny some credit and the staff for getting his guys ready to play. You know, they could have been easy for them to lay down and yeah. quit. Give the players credit for playing hard, too, to the coach. Every single player has spoken, has spoken very, very highly of their head coach. And a lot of them took the blame themselves, which I thought was, was kind of cool. So what about Coach Bunny? Barth's kick taken by David Grimes. Nearly broke free. David Grimes on the return. Taken down at the 30-yard line. Well, the, the players have played now two consecutive weeks since they learned John Bunting wouldn't be back as the Carolina head coach. And here's what quarterback Cam Sexton said about his head coach. I've never played for a guy I care more about his players, and, you know, I really feel like, you know, he has my back. So, you know, it makes things easier when you feel like your head coach is behind you and, and he uh, has your best interest at heart. So, you know, it's easy to play hard for a guy like that. And indeed they have. Giving Wake Forest a game last week and hanging with Notre Dame here. It's 24-13. Defense needs to make another stop for the Tar Heels. Samarja. Big pushing again, right? Got away from one man, then caught by the shoe tops by Jermaine Strong. You know, Jermaine Strong, that's the third time, has been so far off the wide receivers twice on the McKnight. That time on McSart, Mc, uh, Samarja. I mean, he, he's 10 yards off him. That's just giving him a first down, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. And maybe more if he breaks this one. It went for 12 as it was. Jermaine Strong having a tough tough days a lot of defensive backs have to def do, uh, defend these tall and strong wide receivers Darius Walker penetration in the backfield that time with a shoe top tackle by DJ Walker only a gain of a couple let's go to Lewis hey Tom uh, during that uh, last Brandon Tate run 90 yards down the field for North Carolina Mike Hayward the offensive coordinator for Notre Dame pulled the entire offense together and said these things. He said, we have a list of mistakes, went through about 10 of them. Said the bottom line here is that we've got to stay on track. Down and distance is critical. He said, there's no way that Notre Dame should have any third and longs because of the, uh, it's happened because of all the mistakes. And of course, when we get to the red zone, we have to remain 100%. Tom? Settled for a field goal their last trip to the red zone after they had scored three touchdowns before that. Play clock ticking down to get it away to Walker. Walker using his blockers. Run out of bounds just short of the first down by Jacoby Watkins. So it'll be third down. And today's first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. Another one of those really patient runs by Darius Walker. You know, Maneer Prince coming in now as he comes off. But, but tell you, D Darius Walker runs the draw and the screens and those wide plays. Pretty doggone well because he's got that great vision. Third down and two. There's the freshman Prince, the speedster. Notre Dame has converted three of five on third down. Watch yourself. We have a Prince package in this week. But it'll be Quinn to the air. A slant to McKnight knocked away. Strong. That was Jermaine Strong. Didn't give him a push in that time. Yeah, first really time that Jermaine Strong route. And, and the coaches are really high on Jermaine Strong and his ability, the freshman. They think he's got a big upside, but he had too much cushion earlier. This time much closer, knocks the ball away from McKnight and saves a first down. So nice play by Jermaine. Well, given a lift by the uh, kickoff return for a touchdown, the Carolina defense stiffens. And here's the hero of the moment, Tate. Uh, deep to re receive that Jeff Price punt. Price to Tate calls for a fair catch this time and takes it at the 10 yard line. But Carolina gets the ball back with 438 left after a 39 yard punt with no return. Notre Dame 
football is brought to you by Chase. To apply for a Notre Dame credit card with Blink from Chase, call 877-49-BLINK today. 4.38 to go in the first half. And Joe Daly will be back at quarterback for the Tar Heels. He directed a touchdown drive earlier in the game. Irish up 24-13. Both quarterbacks have had two series on the field. Well, the Daly's played much better, don't you think? Yes. And off to McGill. Fights uh, ahead for a yard or so. And ball presented by Vonage. Second down and nine for the Tar Heels. The Irish guard over on the sideline there as Notre Dame stiffens the defense from the 11 yard line of the Tar Heels. Play action fake and Davey rolls with a man in his face. He throws it into the yeah, Maurice, bench. Maurice Crumbs had a pretty good first half. He was the guy right in the face of Joe Deal. That's three times though he has blitzed Tom and they really haven't had any chance of blocking him. Nobody, nobody's blocked Maurice Crum. Three times. It was a delayed blitz. Yeah. And you know, but for that, he's got a wide open receiver he picks up for a first down. So that was a significant play by Maurice Crum. And it means the Tar Heels now face a third and nine from deep in their own territory. That's daily, and remember. Yeah, it's only 50% of the equation. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really important down for North Carolina because Brady Quinn's been awfully good in the last couple of minutes of the first half. From the shotgun. Blitz by Crum. Daly taken down. Forward progress at about the two-yard line. Maurice Crum once again on the blitz, and that time he got him. Well, in the first quarter, Vicky Abiyamiri came cleanly two or three times. Maurice Crum has come cleanly about five times. In here, Maurice, there is nobody blocking him, and that's the problem. This is the first time, got him the second time. And now Woolridge must punt from his own end zone. Remember, he had the punt blocked for a touchdown against Wake Forest last week. But the Irish have the return on. Zibikowski backpedals to the Irish 48. Up the center, Zibikowski broken in the tackle. Has a block. Zibikowski to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown of his Notre Dame career, his third punt return touchdown. And went for 52 yards, and now Joya for the extra point. Puts it up and dead center for Carl Joya. Hey Tom, remember Lloyd Carr of Michigan was saying to us a few weeks ago before the Michigan, he's an unusual punt returner because he's such a big, strong guy. You know, the first thing he he catches the ball pretty cleanly. And then once he makes the first guy miss, you know, he's a high school quarterback, a running quarterback, a nice block by Anastasio. And, uh, you know, two special teams plays for touchdowns. And most uh, punt returners are small. Yeah, scat backs. Yeah, quick guys, fast guys. And Zivikowski gets it done in his own manner. sense that there's a moment of possibility in the air when the ball is punted to Tom Zivikowski and the student section always seems to feel it. So they gave up a special teams touchdown and they got it right back. Well, Carolina's going to have plenty of time and two timeouts remaining. Try to make something happen. Well, the, uh, the Mohawk from earlier in the season is now <laughs> gone. filling in, isn't it? Well, let's get a little chillier. <laughs> Makes sense. The Pikowski, who was uh, injured and missed a couple of games for the Irish, obviously back at full strength. Ryan Burkhardt will kick it to Tate. And Tate will take this one. Can he pull it back again? No. Bragging tacklers and doesn't make the 20 yard line that time as the Irish special teamers were ready for him, led by Kyle McCarthy, who made the tackle. 
Well, Tom Zibikowski, this has been his specialty. He scored on a 60-yard punt return against USC. Then the following week against BYU, returned an interception, 83 yards for a touchdown. Versus Tennessee, scored on a 78-yard punt return and a 33-yard interception return. And then this season, earlier against Penn State, picked up that fumble, took it 25 yards for the touchdown. Now he adds a 52-yard punt return against North Carolina. This is a keeper by Daly. Only got two or three yards. Maurice Crum, what a, what a half Maurice Crum has had. Boy, made that stop on Joe Daly. He said their leading tackler, really, because, you know, Zibikowski was out for a, what, a game. And mm -hmm. A little bit more than that. But he's done a little of everything. Crum, leading tackler, now with three sacks, has a forced fumble, has an interception. So he's been an all round mainstay on defense from that. Middle linebacker spot. Yeah, that's this is the first year he's actually played the middle too, and he's played it pretty well. McGill had a seam, and then Crum drags him down just okay, short of the first down get. line. Get my Crum. And clock shows 134, and we'll have the Toyota halftime show at intermission. Jimmy Roberts back in our New York studio. Peter King will join him with the latest NFL news and. A preview and a look at Teddy Bruschi, the outstanding New England Patriots linebacker. They'll talk about that New England Indianapolis game tomorrow night. College football scores and highlights. And don't forget the halftime performances of the Notre Dame and the NC bands can be seen live on NBCSports.com. Why isn't Carolina in, in a hurry up? <laughs> Receiver fell down. That one incomplete. Nix lost his footing. If you'd like to watch uh, the bands at halftime, uh, Chicago will be joining the Notre Dame band for a halftime that is, show. It is the band, not the city, will be here performing. See that at NBCSports.com. And, of course, the Toyota halftime show with Jimmy Roberts and Peter King with all the college news and a preview of tomorrow night's big Sunday night football game. And Tom, that was a poor offensive series for North Carolina. They're going to give the ball back to Notre Dame with lots of time again. Waldridge, another towering punt. Zibikowski gathers it in. Two men had a shot at him, and here he is again, just dragged down from behind. That was DJ oh, he was gone again. DJ Walker had him. But still, it was a 13-yard return after the punt covered 42. So the Irish come into today's game ranked ninth in the BCS standings. West Virginia third, of course, before their loss at Louisville. The Cardinals figure to move up, yeah, and the Mountaineers will move down. Remember now, Notre Dame is guaranteed a BCS bowl berth if they finish in the top eight in the BCS standings. Quinn pumps once, hit as he lets it go, and it falls incomplete. That was Matt who knocked Quinn to the and this has been uh, Brady Quinn's time, would you think, Tom, right before the that end of the half? He's performed so well this year. These are just last possessions of the first half. Thrown for four touchdowns, accounted for another one. He had a run for a touchdown as well. Just been uh, particularly good before the halves and at the end of games when they really needed it against Michigan State and UCLA. Second down to 10. Senses a blitz. Here they come. Good protection. They pick up the blitz, but a short gain to Carlson. So with 35 seconds left, the Irish take a timeout. They already have put up 31 points, the most in a first half this season. In fact, the most since they scored 35 at Pitt. To open last season. Well, think about Charlie Weiss's team. This is his 21st game as a head coach. They've now the scored 30 or more points 16 times and 40 or more points eight times in his career. So when you come to play them, you have to figure out a way to score touchdowns and not settle for field goals or you just can't win. And of course, you put up 31 points with the imaginative plate calling of Charlie Weiss, and he has a lot of plays to go to. In fact, Darius Walker told us about the Charlie Weiss playbook. Phone book, <laughs> definitely phone book, like like this right here. Now you you can think of a phone book and think of pages. You know, pages are real skinny, papers real skinny. You got 
something like this with a whole bunch of pieces of paper in it. So it's just bam, 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 bam. There's thousands of sheets of paper, 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 paper. Yeah, playbook, Coach Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> so There's a lot. You know, if you're an opponent, well, you, you average about 12 series a game, Tom, right? And so you have to score touchdowns on four or five of those 12 possessions or you're not going to win the game because they're going to average about 30 points against almost every opponent. They've scored 31 in this first half, the most of this season. Third down at six. Sneaky <laughs> looks for Carlson has caught a half dozen here in the first half. Big pushing again for Samarja. Quinn lays it up for Samarja, but too far incomplete. Well, good defensive series for Carolina right now. Brady Quinn's been so hot at the end of the first half, but Carolina's defense does their thing. Great yep. job. Marvin Sanders, the defensive coordinator, dialing up some good calls. Yeah, Carolina left them with time, as you pointed, and Quinn had been so good before the half, but the Carolina defense able to force this Jeff Price punt. Price sends it on its way, and Tate fields it at the five. That's dangerous. Does get out of bounds across the 20 yard line. So the clock shows 17 seconds left in the first half. This aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear Tires, featuring triple tread technology with three separate tread zones for peace of mind in any weather. The weather is chilly here at Notre Dame Stadium today. Overcast skies, temperature at game time in the upper 40s, but headed downward. No precipitation yet, though. And John Bunning and the Tar Heels have just 10 seconds left and they're going to looks like they're going to let the uh, the first half run out without running a play. And that will do it. So the end of the first half finds Notre Dame leading 31 13. Let's go to Lewis. All right Tom thanks a lot. Well coach you're up big on the scoreboard over North Carolina but I'm sure knowing you you'll find something to coach up in the half. What might that be. Well, we gave up a touchdown on, on the kickoff kickoff coverage, and we dropped a couple touchdown passes. But you know, I thought that our guys played pretty aggressive in the first half. And what do you say when you're up 31-13 over a team? How do you keep them moving in the second in the second half? Well, we were far from perfect in the first half, right there. We need. You know, I think that all the guys just uh, just do their jobs to try to be better. All right, coach. Thank you, Tom. All right, Lewis Brady Quinn with 266 yards and three touchdowns in that first half. 31 13. Plenty ahead. Jimmy Roberts joined by Peter King in our New York studio. Don't forget the halftime performances of the Notre Dame and UNC bands and Chicago on NBCSports.com. But now it's time for the Toyota halftime show. Let's go to Jimmy Roberts. Burkhart's kick. Tate takes it a yard deep. Made a nice move on one man, then is wrapped up and taken down where the Tar Heels will start as we look at our first half stats presented by Vonage. Well, not a lot of rushing yards there in the first half. 18 rushing yards on 14 attempts by Notre Dame. But boy, they got that passing game going, didn't they? And each team with a special teams touchdown. But uh, Brady Quinn accounting for three touchdown passes. 266 yards passing by him in the first half. Pretty amazing uh, first half as he continues to photocopy one good game after the next. So Joe Daly begins at quarterback for the Tar Heels here in the second half. And they begin from their own 17 yard line with a handoff to McGill. And McGill carries Joe Brockington with him for a couple of steps before he's taken down with a pretty good gain on first down for the heels. Tommy always talk about you know, making second half adjustments. I tell you, the second half defense in this third quarter, they've been awfully good. They've made some adjustments. They forced seven punts and had a turnover in the first drive of the second half. Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator, dialing up the right changes at halftime, and his team has really responded, only giving up one touchdown in the entire third quarter this year.
Bailey whips it out to his wide out to Nix. And Akeem Nix will take a Tar Heel first down. Zibikowski and Ndukwe ride him out of bounds. You know, Tom, Akeem Nix, Nix has a chance of really being a special player. Just a freshman, good size. Watch him. He's very good after the catch. Watch him make the defensive back Lambert miss. But a guy who did not lose a game in high school. And, and just a year ago, and playing out down there in Charlotte, caught 93 passes, 20 of them went for touchdowns. Can really be a big player in the ACC and for Carolina in the years ahead. Prep All American at Charlotte Independence High School, leading them to the state championship. McGill tackled by Crum. I see a flag come yep, down. Late flag. Yeah. Ronnie McGill keeps running hard and churning, no matter what the record, what the score, what the circumstance. 29 carries last week. Face mask against Notre Dame. Talk to about Ronnie McGill. Playing. Incidental face mask against the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. Second down. From Clover, South Carolina, is Ronnie McGill. You mentioned that a little bit earlier, Tom. Did right. a little bit of everything in high school. Played quarterback and running back. And then on defense, he was a star at linebacker and played some free safety. Two scored 29 uh, yeah. touchdowns as a senior. And he's the team cook. <laughs> Quite a cook. Yeah, every Sunday has the team over. Dials up a nice little menu for his teammates. First down and three yards to go for the Tar Heels. But McGill stacked up in the backfield somehow. Got free to regain the line of scrimmage. And Maurice Crum is having quite a game right in the That's center of things Crum. again for yeah. the Irish. But, but you know who got there first? Derek Landry. You know, Crum finished it off, but Derek Landry inside. Watch here what happens. Right back, he centered the, he takes the two blockers right back into the ball carrier. And that's why Maurice Crum and Joe Brock to make the tackle. Derek Landry once again quick off the ball. No gain, second down. Daly wasn't ready for the snap. Has to fall on it. Well, last week he fumbled two snaps in shotgun formation. And that was Lenahan, though, snapping it when he wasn't ready. He's looking the other way. Wow. Mm. He was still licking his fingers, going to get ready for the snap. And these are the kind of mistakes that have plagued John Bunny's team all season long. Third down conversions. Who had average to go 11 yards. You know, Victor Amiri is a guy who's really been tough on this down for these guys. Daly puts it down the sideline, and it's caught by Nix. Hakeem Nix went up to get it, and a nice thrown ball under pressure by Joe Daly, and Nix grabs it for 41 yards. Well, I think just Joe Daly's got to stick it out through the second half. They just got to give him a, cha a chance. A blitz pickup by the Carolina team allows Joe Dealey to get this ball off. Good uh, block by McGill. Throw by Dealey. Give your receiver a chance. And then a key mix. Just talk about the true freshman. Just taking the ball away from Lambert, who had him pretty well covered. His high school nickname, The Dream. You see why? Just, yep. He's got, you know, they said he's got big play <laughs> potential. Hakeem The Dream and strong hands that time to take it away from Lambert. As they picked up the blitzing Maurice Crum, which had been a problem in the first half. Daly's keeping it, but nowhere to go. Tripped up penetration once again from the Irish defenders. Abby Amiri was there. Landry was there. One more look at the strong hands of Knicks. I mean, that's good coverage by Lambert. But, you know, he's a big, strong receiver. Just would not let Lambert take the ball or knock the ball away from him. Well, I'd give him a few more chances on jump balls with hands like that, right? He's got good size at 6'1". Second down from the 32 of the Irish after the loss in the last play. Out of the backfield to McGill. Irish converge on him inside the 30-yard line. Ambrose Wooden first to hit him. It's going to set up another third and long for the Tar Heels. You see the yellow line where they have to reach to make the first down. Our first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. A nice opening drive by Joe Daly to open this second half. Carolina Band in 
second down as well. Mar Hill's looking for their seventh first down. It would be big as they're in Irish territory, 28 yard line. And Maurice Crum has blitz. Here's Maurice Crum. He has blitz cleanly the entire first half. Eighth play of the drive. Daly has a man open and he finds him. He nicks again and nicks. Rambles for a first down, gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Another completion to Nix. This one 15 yards and a heel first down. A, you know, good play calling by Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator. You got a hot quarterback and a receiver that's hot as well. Give him some more chances. You know, just posts up as he gets turned against Ambrose Wooden. And that time it was uh, the Notre Dame defender. Wooden gave too big a cushion. Yeah. So you said uh, one of our Charles Schwab conversation points was good. Opening drive of the third quarter for the Tar Heels. They have it. Now they need to pay it off. From the 13. Into the end zone for the touchdown to Nix. Boy, Nix came of age on that drive, didn't he? He beat Lambert for the touchdown. And a terrific throw by Joe Dean. Allowed him you know, enough air and away from the defender to allow Nix to run under. Terrell Lambert, who's played awfully well for the Irish this year, but a good throw. By Daly, and you know, deep enough away from the fender, didn't lob it too high. And a terrific series by Joe Daly and Hakeem Nix. Wow. Connor Barth will attempt the point after he missed one earlier. It was actually blocked. And that one is two. That one also is blocked. Boy. Now, this is the guy who was 14 of 14 coming in today on extra point kicks. He's he had, had been, two blocks. Yeah, he'd been perfect in both extra points and field goals, but Derek Landry twice has blocked Barth's extra point. But Joe Daly, five for five on that drive for them to Knicks, including the score. And just a moment ago, over on the North Carolina bench, listen to what. Jesse Holly had to say. Holly telling Nick that's a way to be a playmaker. That's huge as Nick's caught four passes on that drive, including the touchdown. Well, Jesse Holly, the communications major, right at Carolina. He wants to take your job, by the way. I mentioned that to you. Well, that, that was an audition right there. <laughs> David Grimes takes the kickoff. Grimes. Oh, oh, nice yeah. move. Makes another move. And then the pursuit catches him. North Carolina territory. It was Quentin Person that prevented the touchdown as David Grimes, who was a return phenom in high school a year ago, catches that one and makes something out of it two years ago, I should say. You know, Tom, just when you feel Carolina kind of clawing and scratching the way back in it, a big special teams play by the Irish. Terrific move there by by uh, David Grimes. David Grimes made the defensive back miss. But, you know, Carolina's kind of scratching, clawing the way. They close it, and then they had a punt return for a touchdown, and then Grimes in a big kickoff return to, uh, return gives Brady Quinn excellent field position again. Grimes with a 50-yard return to Detroit. Maybe. Actually, born in L.A., grew up Detroit. Darius Walker. Squashed on back at the line of scrimmage. Squash, here's number 75. Sheldon Bynum again making a nice play inside. Green Taylor comes up for a safety and gets a piece. Bynum, the guy that Charlie Weiss was speaking so highly of yesterday to us. Playing him now as a nose guard. Big athlete. He's over 300 pounds. Those Nancy Bears really light in his feet. Florida wins in Nashville. Oh, Kentucky beats Georgia. Your alma mater looking good. Auburn shutting out Arkansas State. A little breather for the Tigers today. So the Von Vanderbilt Commodores playing uh, Florida tough, but the Gators win in Nashville. Pass. Samarch is going to pass it. Hits it downfield. The fastball pitcher comes up short. <laughs> well, you know, it was just too late. <laughs> he had him open early. He has he a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. That one was only about 30. 80. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, as soon as you see this play that they run so much, it was a backwards pass. And you see how open McKnight is, number five? But he couldn't get ready to throw the ball, and then it wasn't a fastball. It, this was the slider. It had the opposite rotation. I think it was a screwball. Yeah, screwball, slider, something. It just wasn't a fastball. But he was open. 
Well, he's 0 for 2 on the year in the passing department. Samarja just a touchdown catch away from the all-time Notre Dame record. Play action fake. Brady Quinn winds up going for the end zone. Samarja. pretty well. Joya will attempt the extra point following Jeff Samarja's record of breaking touchdown and it is good. There's Derek Mays thumbs up after Jeff Samarja breaks Derek's all-time record with his 23rd touchdown catch. Well, it's been a big day for Jeff Samarja. Six catches, 177 yards. This the most recent addition. A little post pattern against Jacoby Watkins. Got lost a little bit, did Watkins. The ball thrown high, and he uses that 6'5 height to rebound for the touchdown and set a Notre Dame record. Very, very good at adjusting the ball to the air, but a little too easy. Watkins just got lost on that long post pattern. And uh, the strong hands of Samarja that we have seen so many times. Latching on to it for his 23rd touchdown reception. And Brady Quinn congratulates his teammate for setting the Notre Dame record. The thing about it, Jeff Samarja didn't catch a touchdown in his freshman or sophomore year. This has all been the last <laughs> two seasons under Charlie Weiss. There's a look at the wide receiver touchdowns as he Breaks the tie with Derek Mays for his 23rd touchdown catch. Burkhardt has it teed up and kicks it off. Williams on the return. Hurtling one man and then slammed down. So after Jeff Samarja set the Notre Dame wide receiver touchdown record, his dad celebrates, and Sam is with Lewis Johnson. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Despite the wind and the cold uh, air up here, Sam Samarja is excited. So take me back to the play as you watch the ball flying through the air, and Jeff catches it. What were you think? I, think? I knew you had it. I knew you had it. There's no doubt in my mind. As long as you can catch it, put his hands on it, he's going to have it. What's a day like this like? You come to the stadium, you're hoping it's going to happen. He was so close in the first half, but then he finally gets. Just describe the day, the anticipation. Well, it's great being here with all our friends, family, uh, the other parents of the other players. And, hey, Rain was catching up to him real fast. You might have to go see Rain's parents. That's exactly right. And finally, you said earlier in the day that you think Jeff can play both sports, baseball and, and football. Uh, what makes you think that? What do you know about him that we don't? Because Jeff's so determined that he wants to do it, and I think he's more than athletic enough to do it. I think he can do it. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of the day. Tom, you guys enjoying your cappuccinos up there? Because these guys are really toughing out. It's cold up here. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Uh, you feel a lot warmer when your son sets the Notre Dame wide receiver touchdown record, I'll tell you. And uh, Sam uh, spends a lot of time with Tom Zibikowski's dad, too, at the Notre Dame games. Close to their sons. Here's a scramble by Daly, and he finds another receiver, and this is Nix again, and Nix is racing for the end zone. Zivikowski makes a run at him, but can't get him. And Akeem Nix with his second touchdown reception of the game, 72 yards from Joe Daly. Hey, Joe Daly has been sensational. How about Joe Daly? 10 of 14, 193 yards, and three touchdowns. Two of those to this guy. He runs right over Terrell Lambert. Gets back up, and because Joe Daly was able to move around in the pocket, bought himself a little bit more time, and then he outraces Tommy Zibikowski. So how about the game Hakeem Nix has had? The offensive coordinator, Frank Signetti, was telling me this guy's going to be a big-time player over the next few years, and, well, he did it today. He's done it today. Some new coach is going to be the beneficiary yeah. of Nix and a strong recruiting class and a lot of red shirts, over 20 of them, too. 171 yards and catches on, on six catches by Nix. Connor Barth has had two yes. blocks. That one is good. Well, Nix, the star of the game so far for the Tar Heels, the freshman from Charlotte. A 
Ali said he was a big play man. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy, and American Revolution. By AdidasBasketball.com, it takes five. By Lincoln Financial Group, providing powerful retirement income security resources to help you say hello future. By Comcast, watch more high-def movies with HD from Comcast, where HD movies live. And by McDonald's. Aerial coverage today brought to you by Goodyear Tires featuring triple tread technology with three separate tread zones for peace of mind in any weather. A lot of offensive fireworks yeah. at Notre Dame Stadium today. It's 38-26 as the Tar Heels, some 30-point underdogs, yeah. hanging right with the Irish. Well, no, we said how well the Irish have played. You look at Joe Daly, he's played sensationally in this game. But the Irish were so good on defense in the third quarter. Well, Carolina's now scored twice. They should have gone for a two-point conversion there to make an 11 point game though Tom. Here's a swift kick. I, I think it's too early to yeah. chase the points as they say. I think that's Phil Sims favorite Is phrase yeah. matter of fact. Let's go back and look at that really terrific touchdown from Daly to Hakeem Nick. The, the, the fact that he was able to get away from the rush that was the key to the play and able to get find uh, Hakeem Nix who breaks one tackle and then has enough speed to outrun Tom Zibikowski into the end zone. But it was Daly's mobility in the pocket. Watch him escape again. And watch how happy he is as he follows the throw. <laughs> and why not? This is Notre Dame Stadium, remember, with a team that's won one game. He was six for six so far here in the second half. There he is, Walker. And... Uh, He's six for six, 154 yards, and two touchdowns in this third quarter. And Nick's in this third quarter with five receptions, 150 yards, and the two scores. And, and what a circuitous route it has been for Joe Daly to get to North Carolina. He really was originally orally uh, committed to Syracuse. He's, he grew up in uh, New Jersey, committed orally to Syracuse, changed on that, went to Nebraska, and uh, left Lincoln with a coaching change and came to North Carolina. Set out last year. That's behind McKnight and incomplete. Well, he actually started 11 games for Nebraska a couple of years ago and was the first Nebraska quarterback ever to throw for over 300 yards. Nix is enjoying things, isn't yeah. he? Should be. He's got a future. Now, one thing, I don't know what their schedule is now, but I would not take Joe Daly out. Yeah, he's scheduled to come out now on yeah. the two series no. alternation. No. But I, I can't imagine that that would happen. And even uh, Cam Sexton looks to be content. He still has the headset on. And Daly told us the two quarterbacks aren't close, despite the fact that they split playing time, which sometimes can be divisive. Yeah, well, Carlton with the first down catch. Is that his first catch of the second half? Yes, it is. And, you know, it's, it's funny. He got a bunch of them early in the first half, right? Carolina tries to take them away. Then they throw the ball to McKnight and Samarcia, Darius Walker, and... Now they go right back to John Carlson. That's why we said the collection of these five players, the four receivers and the quarterback, boy, they are really, really tough. And Brady Quinn at 316 yards now, four touchdowns. It kind of looks like last week's game and the week before that and the week before that. Career high seven receptions for Carlson and for Brady Quinn. That's nine games over 300 yards passing. Oh, boy, did Brady Quinn take a shot. And McKnight can't. Catch it trying to keep his foot oh. in bounds, and as you see, oh. Quinn went down under the rush. I tell you, he is so tough. He took an absolute shot, I think, by Worsley, the linebacker, and he steps right into it, right in the ribs, and he just keeps getting back up. I mean, I think of all the things he's mentally tough, he's physically tough, he's just a gifted player. Good tackle there by Worsley. Second down. I think I've ever seen in four years Brady Quinn come off the field with an injury. Sometimes grimaces a little bit, but here's Walker breaking free momentarily and twisted down as he picks up a first down. And Brady Quinn talks about the way he can take a hit. Yeah, I've learned how to take a hit, which is, I think a lot of quarterbacks have to find on their own way. They've got to, um, I guess, realize that you're going to get hit. So when that hit's coming after you, you got to stay as calm and keep your fundamentals as best as possible to get that ball to the wide receiver. Well, 
and he has taken some shots and bounced right back up. First down. This is McKnight. 35 yard line. Tackled by Jermaine Strong. That one gained seven. Well, so he's taken six hit, five knockdowns, a couple of sacks. And you know, e even that, e even UCLA, when he got sacked five times, knocked down a bunch of times, he saved his best for last, even after, after all that. You know, uh, John Bunting coming into the game, telling us, Pat, that uh, he just wanted his players to play hard, enjoy the moment, playing at Notre Dame Stadium, and just give it everything you have. They've done it. Absolutely. Walker using his vision. There's a flag down. Well, John Bunny told us an interesting story about recruiting. Brady Quinn Walker thought he had him uh, he was going to come on the campus and visit. Thought if he could get him on the campus, he could convince him to be a Tar Heel. And he was walking down the street with his uh, wife after Brady Quinn had been at a camp and was going to leave that camp in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and come to Chapel Hill. Well, 78 the offense, 10 yards from spot the foul, second down. John Sullivan called for a hold. So he's walking with his wife, Coach Bunning, and he gets a call on his cell phone from Brady Quinn from Columbia, South Carolina, saying, Coach, we've decided we're not going to come to Columbia, I mean to Chapel Hill. We're going to go straight uh, from South Carolina, stop off in Knoxville on the way home, but not come to Chapel Hill. And Coach Bunning said if he just could have gotten him on campus, he was certain he could get Brady Quinn to come to North Carolina. One of the college, one of college uh, football's great campuses, and I think the neatest college football stadium in America. Nestled among the pines. After the penalty, second down and 13. Quinn being chased, and he'll be sacked for the third time today. Worsley and Balmer. For a loss of 13. Yeah, Worsley's had a really nice third quarter, and so has the, the inside of play of Ken Balmer. Worsley runs right through Darius Walker. Good coverage downfield forces the sack. There's Kent Juan Balmer. This move inside used to play defensive end. Now they moved him inside. And boy, he's been a pretty athletic inside player. Third down and 25. A stop here would be huge for the Tar Heels. Five wide receivers. Here's Carlson again. His career high eighth catch. Tackled by Mapp. Well short of first down yardage. Bringing up a fourth down for Notre Dame. Good defensive series. Charlie Weiss sends out the putt team on fourth down. Boy, North Carolina has been given a lift by Akeem Nix and Joe Daly here in the third quarter, and the defense has yeah. taken the hint and done a good job. Tate awaits the price kick. Sailing punt off the foot of Price. Tate let it go, and it'll hit the end zone for the touchback. Well, good field position for the Tar Heels after that ball goes into the end zone. Balmer got a hug for his defensive prowess on that last Notre Dame drive. Tar Heels ball when we come back. Time now for our Liberty Mutual Legends of the Game. October 11th, 1975, Notre Dame against Carolina in Chapel Hill. Third period, North Carolina up 14-0. Then trailing 14 to 6, sophomore Joe Montana entered the game. First drive hit Dan Kelleher down the sideline to the two yard line. That set up a touchdown on the next play, and then he hit a two point conversion to tight end Doug Booth. And after North Carolina missed a field goal, Montana hit Ted Bergmeyer, 80 yard touchdown with a minute three to go. The Irish won at 21 14. Joe Montana's first comeback. How about Carolina? The last two times you play against Notre Dame, you face Joe Montana and then Brady Quinn. That <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem fair. But they're hanging in there, and Joe yeah. Daly will remain at quarterback. We said that that would be the right call, and indeed, they do stick with a hot hand. Joe Daly will be under quarterback, will be under center at quarterback. He has had an outstanding third quarter. He is in the shotgun, actually, this time. Hands it off to McGill, and he's thrown back by Victor Abbey Amiri and his defensive line mates. Well, Joe Daly has really done a lot of this on his own. You know, he's been rushed, but he's been able to kind of dance around the pocket, break a few tackles, and make some things happen downfield, particularly to Hakeem Nix. 
Already uh, five first downs in the quarter by North Carolina when they had only four in the entire first half. They've gained 151 yards in this third quarter after only 62 in the first two quarters. And they're going to have to burn a timeout. Some confusion about personnel. Yeah, they had plenty of time on the play clock, but the wrong personnel grouping in there. Tar Heels spend a timeout. They will be second and nine when we come back. And it'll be coming your way on Sunday Night Football tomorrow night on NBC. Those guys can chuck. Well, Joe Daly's been chucking it pretty well here in the third quarter, and he faces a second down and nine. Crom faked the blitz, and then he finds Foster, his first reception of the game, I believe. Tackled by Ambrose Wooden. And, and Tom, you know, Joe Daly's got these guys on a roll right back in the ball game. But this is really an important third down for Joe Daly. And it's manageable, only third and about three yards. But things are really going the Tar Heels way right now because of that man and the way their defense has dialed it up the last couple of series. Daly is seven for seven in this third quarter. short order but got it out there but Foster unable to hold on Derek Landry right in the face of Joe Daly that's why you know sacks can be overrated we talked about it Tom the pressure the pressure on Joe Daly otherwise this is a completion he couldn't step into the throw it's almost catchable anyway isn't it almost but it would have been a good throw had he been yeah. able to step into it but because of the rush of Derek Landry Woolridge. Zibikowski. Fair catch. Taken at the 39 yard line. That was a 35 yard punt without a return. But tomorrow, oh, with only three races to go, NASCAR's chase for the championship hits the stretch run in Texas. Jimmy Johnson's been on fire lately. A win and two runner up finishes his last three races. That's taken him up to second place. Next Dale Cup racing from Texas tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, here on NBC. Let's see how Brady Quinn responds. A minute in the third quarter. Big McKnight push. has to go to the turf, though, to pick it up, and so will be short of the first down. Jermaine Strong giving him that cushion again, but the pass took him to the turf. Yeah, I think Jermaine Strong is leaning, looking over the sidelines. Hey, let me move up a little bit. He's saying, you know, let's, let's uh, play some double coverage. Let me jam him at the line of scrimmage. You're, you're playing off so much, and uh, McKnight and Samarsha are just taking the easy throws in front of him. Here he is on McKnight, on uh, McKnight at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, he's coming up a little bit. This yeah, is where he wanted to Inching his way up. He'll hand it off to Walker. Darius Walker with a cutback and a spin to the 45-yard line of North Carolina. That'll be an Irish first down. Nine-yard gain. Kareem Taylor will get credit for the tackle. Yeah, Darius Walker is a chain mover, isn't he? I mean, whether he catches the ball or runs it, he just converts a lot of downs. Good block by Marcus Freeman, the tight end. But just, you know, always moving the chains. Whether it's by a reception or a run, not real flash. Did have a lot of long runs. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter as they let the clock tick away. So the third quarter ends with Notre Dame leading North Carolina 38 to 26. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium right after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC presented by Vonage. Notre Dame leading 38-26. Today's game presented by Vonage as Peter Elliott Tchaikowski's 18-12 overture as the students make the W with their hands. The tradition to end the third and start the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. So the Irish take over. Brady Quinn so tough in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Seven touchdowns and one interception. Walker. 
David Grimes giving him a block down field. Matt finally chases him down after a good first down run by Darius Walker. You know, Carolina needs to kind of dial up a, a negative play, Tom. You know, they played well defensively in this in the third quarter and uh, really good in the last two series. But what they need is a negative play. Notre Dame's getting a little too much on first downs. And Walker uh, closing in on perhaps a fourth 100 yard rushing game of the season. He has 74 at the moment. Here he is again. Tried to break it to the outside and is collapsed by E.J. Wilson, but not until he had the first down. Yeah, another one of those little delay runs for Darius Walker, a draw. See Bob Morton on the right side and John Sullivan doing a good job. Lead block by Ashley McConnell. A lot of that was just plain old Darius Walker. Carolina 33. Turf stuck in his face mask. Quick toss to McKnight. Not McKnight chased out of bounds. Short of that yellow first down line. Today's first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. You know, Tom, we talked to Bob Morton yesterday, and we said, hey, uh, how'd you become an offensive lineman? He says, well, I could run, can't catch, can't throw, wasn't much left. <laughs> Playing the offensive line just, just like his dad did at Rutgers. Said his dad died cancer right before the Georgia Tech game, and it's been uh, on his heart and mind the whole season. Yep, it's never been far from his thoughts. Some days are better than others. He said it well yesterday when he said to us, you know, if my mom is doing okay, I'm doing okay. And his younger brother, Tommy. And there are the uh, wristbands that he puts on his ankles and around his socks with his dad's initials. Well, he's a senior here too and he was talking about boy the years have gone by fast he said I remember walking on the campus the very first time Jeff Fain who was an all-american center was his was recruiting him walked around the campus for that very first time he says here it is I've got two more home games left third down and four for the Irish Quinn with a quarterback sneak bursting free inside the 20 after picking up the first down you see a lot of quarterback snakes on inches and, and, you know, on one yard, but you don't see it too often on fourth yards. And watch him follow Bob Morton and John Sullivan. Number 76 is Morton. Sullivan, 78, kind of splits their blocks. And, you know, again, another unusual yet successful call. Good blocks by Morton and Sullivan. And he found the seam right between yeah. those two. That's why he was able to burst free. First down, Irish. 20-yard line of the heels. Play action fake, and Brady Quinn chased from the pocket. And a flag is down. Quinn's going to keep it. Takes a hit as he ducks out of bounds, and flags flying from every direction. That was a map, and then a pushing and shouting match breaks out as the Irish come to protect their quarterback. And Brady got up and said, hey, I'm okay. Darrell Mapp gave him the shot out of bounds. Matt might have been thrown out of the game. Did you see that? The referee pointing. We'll have to wait and see the uh, ruling. We'll sort it all out. There was an early flag thrown right at the yep, line of scrimmage yep. where you would expect a hold. Yep. And then the late hit drew three flags. Yeah, he definitely was late. He was out of bounds yeah. clearly by a couple yards. Right. Well, that's not the kind of uh, play Coach Bunning wanted, and Coach Weiss worried about protecting his quarterback. Yeah, well, by the way, uh, speaking of Coach Bunning, there have been several uh, internet news outlets that have reported that Butch Davis has been offered the North Carolina head coaching job. Yeah, so they called holding on the Irish and personal foul against North Carolina. Two unsportsmanlike on Carolina, one on Notre Dame. That would be for the scuffle that broke out after the late hit. Holding number three. 
three of the offense. That's 10 yards in the previous spot. After the play, dead ball personal foul, number 48 of the defense. That'll be 15 yards from the succeeding spot. So we have a dead ball personal foul, 26, half the distance to the goal from the succeeding spot. First down. Okay, a lot of penalties in tones, all I can say. The late hit on Brady Quinn. You know, it just any time a quarterback's even close to being out of, bound, out of bounds, you don't hit him. But and he was intent, three yards out. Yeah, his intent, of course, was to go. There's McKnight with a push of Map, who made the late hit. And then the Irish come rushing over and want to watch through the net. Look like a punch uh, somebody throws. There's one, a North Carolina player throwing a, a punch. And that was uh, Jermaine Strong. And that was the second. Personal foul. No ejections, it appears, though. Well, he called it on 26. He may have got the wrong number. Yeah. He called it on 26. They're going to do a little dance out there now to try to get all the yardage. Just stepped off in two different directions. And by the time they get there, it'll be first and goal for the Irish. Now, really, just as Carolina again was fighting their way back in, just a stupid penalty. And it really was a stupid penalty. And there's Matt, who started it all over on the sideline. In fact, it would have been a big play for the defense because it was a hold against Notre yeah, Dame. It's a, a good point. And strong, picking his spot. He's on the slot receiver, Samarja. Walker plows away to the three yard line. It'll be second and goal for the Irish. Three different players have scored touchdowns for the Irish today Carlson, Samarja, and McKnight. See how good they are down there scoring touchdowns. And uh, Coach Weiss will go to his uh, power formation here, one would guess. Freeman and Carlson, two tight ends. Walker remains at the running back spot. Sometimes he uses Travis Thomas in this spot. Samarja is in motion. Darius Walker. Fighting his way. And stopped at the one-yard line. And vision, a little delay run again by Walker. No, he's short. The ball was a good yard short of the end zone when his knee went down. Now Brady Quinn's been awfully good on quarterback sneaks, had he during his four years. Just ran one from four yards out and converted. So the ball just inside the one on third and goal. Quinn will hand to Walker. Series for the offensive line, Tom. Darius Walker with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And the offensive line, Dan Santucci and company, opening up the hole for Darius Walker coming right at you. Dan Santucci and Ryan Harris, the lead block by McConnell. Big hole for Darius Walker. So a 10 play drive that consumed over five minutes. Results in a Darius Walker touchdown. Paul Julia's extra point is good. And the Irish increase their lead to 45 26. Big smile for Brady Quinn, despite the fact he's taken a couple of shots today. And uh, he has the Irish on top 45 26 after the latest touchdown run by Darius Walker. And Friday Night Lights, one of the most critically acclaimed shows this fall, has a new episode this Tuesday, 8, 7 Central. That's Friday Night Lights right here on NBC. All the, uh, the charm of high school football, such a big part of uh, American life, especially in the South and Southwest. Ryan Burkhart will kick it off. And as usual, Tate and Williams are deep for the heels. Short kick. Down to the end zone. 
momentum of the ball carried into the end zone. You don't have to bring it out. You can down it there. It's touchback. How about this? The over 60 yard drives, 27 touchdowns on 32 drives. They've had three of them today. They, you know, they just possess the ball. It means good play calling, good execution. They can, you know, they can beat you a couple of different ways. And they, they could kind of play small ball or long ball with you. And then when they get in the red zone, they are just absolutely deadly. They just yeah. get touchdowns. And that last time helped out by uh, North Carolina penalties. Indeed. There is a, uh, speaking of penalties, a marker on the uh, kickoff. After the play, personal foul, 56 of the receiving team. After this is the goal, first down. That's another costly penalty against uh, the Heels. Garrett White. Things getting a little chippy out there now. Think about Charlie Wise, 21st game as a head coach here, and now nine games his team have scored over 40 points. So better than a third of the games they've played, they've scored over 40 points. And so that's why I say you have really got to have a plan to score in your own four or five or six touchdowns against them, otherwise you just can't keep pace. Carolina backed up here from their own 10. It's been feast or famine for them today. Three touchdown drives. Also six, three and outs. Let's we'll see that this one will be an incomplete pass on first down intended for McGill. Well, that'll be second down and 10 deep in their own territory. Joe Daly remains at quarterback. What Joe Daly was saying to us yesterday, he was a high school quarterback, but also the kicker. And he had seven two-point plays in one season. Never heard of that, did you? And no. he said, well, what they would do, he'd be back like he was going to kick it, and they'd snap it directly to him, let him run it in let for two. Let him run two. it in. Never was stopped. He was seven for seven on two-point plays. Play action fake. Daly chased. Tried to throw it, and it is batted away incomplete. Trevor Laws. And actually, uh, Justin Brown in on the play. and Justin he, Brown, Trevor Laws, Derek lucky, Landry. Not tackled for a safety here. Yeah, that, that's what I thought it could have been. Is there a receiver in the area? He's a lineman. Yeah, I guess yeah, there's a uh, running back like out it, there. Yeah. yeah, otherwise, that's a, that's a safety. It was Trevor Laws first. Lots of bad things could have yeah. happened there. Watch how quick Trevor was. You see that? He almost, he almost took the interception as well. So now third down. Screen pass. McGill went the opposite way from his blocker. Still had a pretty nice game in the play, but short of the first down. Finally tackled by Victor Abby Amiri. Yeah, and what a hustle play by Abby Amiri. Abby Amiri was almost in Joe Daly's face when he was running the screen. The ball released out of his hands and ran down 30 yards to make the tackle. And McGill is the injured Tar Heel. Is Abby Amiri? McGill uh, has rushed for 64 yards today and caught three passes. Really coming in after a you know outstanding performance against Wake Forest last week. Really a workhorse a, year, a week ago. We were talking to him this week and he was saying, you know, it's the football's been disappointing, but Carolina was still the right choice for me. It's a great place. Learned a lot. Good all around experience for me. As we said from Clover, South Carolina, I think that's just uh, over the border, not far uh, south of Charlotte. They are depleted at running back, too. Uh, Barrington Edwards has been suspended. Charlie Choo Choo Justice out of uh, eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> A good name, though, from the past. Oh, huh? Choo Choo Justice, one of the best. Carolina perhaps 
most known for its basketball these days, but uh, with a pretty good football tradition as well. Oh yeah. Mac Brown had it really going there a few years ago before he went to Texas. And he applauds uh, his teammate. And he's had a nice few games, Ronnie McGill. So we'll return to punt, and it's George West that'll be deep for Notre Dame. Not Zivikowski, who had a punt return for a touchdown earlier, but George West. And West, the freshman. Oh, oops. Ball loose. Oops. And they scramble for it underneath that pile. Officials doing their best to get in there and separate things. Yeah, Keenan Taylor was down there, the first, number 27 for the Tar Heels. North Carolina ball. Kareem Taylor wrestled it away for the first turnover of the game by either team. It's George West who muffs right, right off his face mask. Right on. It's hard to catch if you hit your face mask. And Taylor was the first guy down who's played real well on defense, now on special teams. Seems like West just kind of felt Taylor coming uh -huh. in his presence. And took his eye off it just a little bit. Carolina just kind of continues to hang in there. At the Just game. under 10 minutes to play. Zibikowski, normally the punt returner who had a touchdown 52 yard return earlier today, was not in there. Bobby Rome with the injury to McGill lines up a tailback. He's normally a fullback. Give the ball to Rome. And then he shows his fullback like strength as he pounds ahead inside the Notre Dame 40 yard line. With Joe Brockington hanging on. I tell you what, Bobby Rome was a quarterback, recruited as a quarterback, was a quarterback last spring. Went into Coach Bunny feeling like he wasn't going to get any playing time there, asked to be moved. They moved him to fullback. And then there was a suspension to Barrington Edwards, who's the backup tailback. So now he's playing tailback. So third different position in probably six months for Bobby Rome. From Norfolk Granby High School, and four years he started at quarterback at Granby. There he is again. Made a nice hesitation step and then drove straight ahead. He'll be a yard short of the first down in Dukeway. Was the first man to hit him. Well, he has not had a carry in his career. Now two in a row. 5'11", 240 pounds. So he's probably more built more to play fullback than quarterback. In fact, they haven't had a fullback carry all season. Yeah. Rome had caught five passes. Frank. Signetti, the offensive coordinator, was saying he was hoping he was going to get a chance to see Bobby Rome a little bit back there in the tailback position. Now they put Justin Warren in at tailback. 6'1, 198 pounds, a junior from Germantown, Maryland. Instead, they hand it to Rome from the fullback spot, and he has, I believe, the first down. Close. A nice little series for Bobby Rome. Didn't get a very generous spot, however, and it's going to be very close. You see the officials foot right on the yellow line so and then they move it back a little bit at that first down the first game right, it down. is the first down so you know Carolina still has a chance here right 821 left in this game but they I think they got to get in and out of the huddle they got to continue to make plays and they need it still need a couple defensive stops but Joe Daly has played brilliantly 12 of 19 Three touchdowns, and most importantly, no interceptions. He's had a propensity to throw interceptions at Nebraska in here, but none today. Oh, he's open. It's a, a pass back to Daly. And he couldn't track it down, and it's incomplete. It looked like it could have been intercepted by Ndukwe, but no, he was out of bounds. I tell you, and Duque really covered some territory, Tom, because this plate was it was developing. I saw I thought Daly was going to be wide open, but and Duque really covered some ground. The Svelte and Duque, who lost 20 pounds in this offseason, so he could make plays like that. Well, they said he catches the ball. They said he was out. I think they ought to look at that one. I think they're going to have to review that well, one. Again. Was he juggling? Did he have possession when well, that they said, one foot did come down in bounds? No, it's, it's, I think it's already on the way out. All right. Every play is reviewed as we've talked about. See, right there, it doesn't look well, like no, it's... Well, no, his foot came down. I know it did, but it looked like the ball was already on its way out, not completely out yet. Well, you know, if I was I'd call for a 
And excuse me, I thought Notre Dame was going Bailey just has to whip and he found his receiver. Looked like he was just in desperation trying to toss it away. And Jesse Holly and then a flag down. It's Ambrose Wooden. Jesse Holly, kind of a two way star for this Carolina team. Played He's on the uh, Tar Heels National Championship basketball team. In fact, basketball was his first love. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 63 of the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. It'll be third down. Boy. Ben Lemming and mm. another Critical. stupid, costly yeah. Notre or North Carolina penalty. Absolutely. There is the top of the screen. The plays, the plays clearly the over. Plays dead. Ben Lemming. Ben Lemming off a cliff. <laughs> he want, may want to after the coach is finished with him. So the costly penalties against North Carolina. And two personal fouls this quarter alone. Practically handed Notre Dame a touchdown yeah. and now maybe prevented them from taking one in. Yeah, it would have been second and nine. Now it's what third and forever. I mean, the first down is in Chapel Hill from here. Daly throws it just as far as he can to the end zone and he overthrew everybody. In fact, Zibikowski was closest to it. He wanted to put it up there and let big Akeem Nix, who showed us his ability to go get the football in the third quarter, get it. But the pass from Daly overshot everybody, including Zibikowski, who was deepest of all. Well, sometimes in those situations, you figure on third down, you try to get 10, and the next down, you get 10 maybe, or try to get yourself a field goal, but he was going for it all. He's had some success. Has a strong arm, we can say that. Well, now Jeff Samarsh is coming back to return the punt. Third different punt returner. We'll no longer see George no. West. <laughs> or his face mask. Goldridge, <laughs> eighth punt by UNC. And Samarsh lets it hit and into the end zone for the touchback. So with 7-10 left, Samarja didn't get a chance. But he and the Irish lead 45-26. And the darkness at Notre Dame Stadium. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear Tires featuring triple tread technology with three separate tread zones for peace of mind in any weather. Pretty picture of Notre Dame Stadium <laughs> before the game now. The quarterbacks, you think they have enough quarterbacks ready to play today? Wow. That's the warm-up line of the uh, Notre Dame quarterbacks in the pregame warm-ups. And right now, number 13, Evan Sharpley is on at quarterback for the Irish. Brady Quinn done for the day. Hmm. Yeah, what a day. 346 in yardage, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. Season high in yardage for Brady Quinn as he exceeds 300 yards passing for the ninth time in his career. Sharply with a handoff to James Albridge, the freshman running back. Shows us his strength as he pounds ahead before Kareem Taylor stops him. It looks like it's right at the first down marker. It is enough for a first down. Evan Sharply up. And as he hands the ball to James Aldrich, this is a guy that, uh, you know, Charlie Weiss has been awfully high on. I was hoping actually to get him in more in the first half today. He was in for a couple of plays, right. but wanted to feed him the ball in the first half. Has what he calls an Aldridge package. Slowed by injury earlier in the season. Turkovich, Olsen, Mattis, Duncan, backup lineman on the field for the Irish as well. Aldridge met at the hole that time, or no hole, and <laughs> driven back by Worsley. And, uh, Charlie Weiss about Evan Sharpley uh, this year he says you know he knows how to run an offense that's built for Brady Quinn but uh, don't really change the play calls for him they didn't have to change a thing heck of a high school career in Michigan Isn't he a Michigan player of the year I think is his senior year in high school yep beat out David Grimes Marshall High School all state baseball player Notre Dame baseball player as well Tackle. 
Jack Zold is just a different kind of player, the kind of guy that uh, Charlie Weiss likes to use in short yardage goal and really kind of wind out the clock. And North Carolina will take a timeout. Timeout Tar Heels trailing Notre Dame in the fourth. Today's game ends. Visit NBCSports.com for the live Bonnage Notre Dame post game report. Your place for all the info you need to know after today's game and the highlight, of course, as always, Charlie Weiss with his <laughs> post game press conference. Very entertaining. Well, you know, he's not going to talk about the 45 points. Charlie Weiss is going to talk about all the problems. They're going to kick off a Jordan touchdown. They gave up a bunch of big plays. As he said in the 60 minute shows, coaches are miserable. <laughs> I didn't see any visible wounds either after that 60 minute uh, appearance. Usually you can't walk away without being <laughs> scuffed up a bit. Sharpley, who had hit his only other pass attempt of the season, misses his tight end Conrad Ruland on that one. And so it'll be a punting situation for the Irish. They'll travel to Colorado Springs to face the Air Force Academy next week. Boy, you know, Air Force really put a number on Army last night. Ouch. Jeff Price will punt it to Tate. the 16 yard line that punt covered 50 yards off the foot of Jeff Price. Back at Notre Dame Stadium after that uh, last play there was another flag and another personal foul against North Carolina for this half Tom. And now Notre Dame gets some backups on the field on defense. John Ryan, Justin Brown, Travis Lightco, Pat Coons, Torian Smith. Actually, for the whole game now, five personal fouls against North Carolina. Foster. And Dukeway let him go rather than risk a personal foul himself. And they're losing the poise just a little bit. The frustration is starting to show through for this one and seven North Carolina team. John Bunting, of course, knows he will not be back next year. They Internet reports several of those news outlets on the internet saying that Butch Davis has been offered the job. North Carolina officials uh, have refused to comment on those reports. Lewis was trying to track down a comment from some of them earlier and they declined to respond. Meanwhile, Bunting and his assistants will wonder about their future in the weeks to come. Bobby Rome. Rome back. You know, Tom, you're right. This is a tough profession. Every coach knows when he gets in it, he's going to get fired once or twice or maybe even three times in his career. But I was talking to offensive coordinator Frank Signetti yesterday, he has three young daughters, and uh, we talked about what he's going to do and just didn't know. Almost uh, very, became very, very emotional. His seven year old daughter said, Dad, don't want to move again. He had just moved his family from Fresno. Instead of the. Uh, you know, ancillary and byproduct of some of these coaches getting fired. You know you get, it's going to happen in this profession, but boy, it could be tough. So you saw all the assistants there in the Carolina blue, not knowing where they will be next season. Another carry for Bobby Rowan. Clock continues to tick away under four minutes now. We told you earlier that. Uh, Uh, Torian Smith, the yeah. freshman from Rome, Georgia. Uh, anxious to get some playing time and some hits in. Been playing pretty good special teams, but now gets a chance to play some defense. Woolbridge will punt, and uh, George West is going to get another chance. Flag down. West fields this one cleanly. Crosses midfield and then is taken down, but a flag back upfield. 44 yard punt, 11 on the return. Well, it's going to be against Carolina holding. Holding, no 
Number two of the kicking team. Penalties refused. It's first down. So Notre Dame will take over, and time for us to look at our Chevrolet players of the game. Quarterback Daly of North Carolina and receiver Samarja from Notre Dame. In recognition of their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. That's Chevy, an American revolution. Joe Dooley really played well. You know, getting really protected the football, the three touchdowns, but no interceptions. And Samarja sets a Notre Dame touchdown reception record. Carry by James Aldrich. Aldrich to the 45. And so we mentioned that uh, the Irish will travel to Colorado Springs next week to take on the Falcons of Air Force off that big win against Army at Army last night. And then the cadets come in to Notre Dame Stadium. And of course the big game at USC to wind up the season Thanksgiving weekend. And perhaps a Heisman Trophy on the line for Brady Quinn, right? It's, it's a two-man race right now. And uh, Troy Smith of Ohio State has a big game against Michigan. That's them ahead of Illinois, as you saw there a moment ago. Tennessee and LSU having a good one at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Who would you agree that it's a two-man race? I agree. Yeah, you and I are both Heisman voters, and, uh, you know, I'm going to wait and see how Troy Smith plays against Michigan, how Brady Quinn plays against USC. Their stats are very comparable, but of course, Troy quarterbacking the number one unbeaten team in the land, and that might yeah. be the difference. No, he, he is the favorite and probably should be. But, uh, you know, that last week, you know, they play Michigan at home. I guess that's the 18th, and they play USC, or Notre Dame plays USC in the 25th. A couple of USC quarterbacks have kind of cinched a Heisman against Notre Dame over the last few years. Maybe Brady Quinn can turn the tables. Nice run by Aldrich, shaking tacklers. Okay, the first thing he did was hold on to the ball. It looked like the ball was going to get stripped, didn't it? It did. One of those things. And Taylor, and instead it went for a 13-yard yeah. gain. It'll hat on a pat on the uh, helmet for a nice run by the freshman. The okay, freshman, the first thing is ball security. Watch it. He gets grabbed and almost knocks it out, but really kind of held it high and tight, as they say. And the freshman uh, running backs really have to learn to do a lot more in, than in college and in high school without the ball. Pass blocking and such. Aldrich had been averaging six yards a carry until that one, which stopped him at the line of scrimmage virtually. Maybe gave him a yard. Darius Walker on the day with a little yawn just because it was just business <laughs> as usual. Day, yeah. 20 carries, 86 yards, and Walker also had a couple of receptions. Yeah, he got the 100 reception mark in his career. I mean, uh, I think that was, that's what makes him pretty special. We'll have a Vonage post game report as soon as uh, the final seconds tick away. Aldridge gets another chance using his blockers. Giving him one of them a little push in the back. And takes it to the 20, and that should be the final play of the game. So Charlie Weiss and the Irish win their eighth game of the season. For John Bunning and uh, the Tar Heels played stubbornly against the heavily favored Irish. But just outmanned today by Notre Dame. The final score 45 to 26 in favor of Charlie Weiss and the Fighting Irish. Perhaps North Carolina discovered a quarterback, though, in Joe Daly, who had a nice game, especially in that third quarter. And Hakeem Nix, their receiver, had a nice third quarter as well. Stay tuned now. The Bonnage post game report will be back in 30 seconds to hear from Coach Weiss. Welcome to the Vonage Notre Dame Post Game Report. <laughs> Notre Dame with a victory over the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Okay, Tom, thanks a lot. Well, Coach, you have moved to 8-1, and one, and what stands out to you in this win? Well, I mean, we got off to a good start, and that was one of the things that we were really trying to emphasize today was making sure that we got on top of North Carolina early. Obviously, in the second, second half in that third quarter, they came back and threw a uh, hit a couple deep ones on us but overall it gives us something to work on for next week and as you look forward to next week and playing at Air Force uh, your your concerns for that game 
Well, I mean, I just watched that game a little bit on TV last night, and yeah. they, sco they scored about half a hundred, so uh, that would be a concern. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank Tom? All right, Lewis. So Notre Dame does the expected and beats uh, North Carolina today for their eighth win of the season behind Brady Quinn's season high passing yardage 346 yards through the air. Yeah and again four touchdowns didn't throw an interception. I, I think the touchdown interception ratio is phenomenal. It's now thrown 25 touchdowns on the year only four interceptions. You know if you get two to one three to one that's sensational but he's been fantastic. Take a look at some of his uh, plays today Tom just you know he has so many guys that can get deep catch the ball that's Samarja and then uh, what about Nick Knight that was the first touchdown then Darius Walker, I think the unsung hero in the receiving game. Carlson props had his best game, don't you think, Tom, yep. as a tight end? Career high receptions for Carlson, who had eight. And 91 yards and a touchdown did Carlson have, and makes the alma mater a little bit sweeter. Doesn't and it? for Jeff Samarja, touchdown pass, his 23rd of his career, the all time Notre Dame wide receiver record. Final Vonage post game report stats. So the defense the, uh, uh, on the right on the right only held him to 31 yards Carolina. It's a good rushing defense by the Irish. And the Irish put up 452 yards of total offense and the special teams TD on each side. Tate had the 90 yard kickoff return for a touchdown and Zivikowski 52 yard punt return for Notre Dame. Final strains of the Notre Dame alma mater. And then the victory march. And here's the record breaking touchdown. Brady Quinn hits Jeff Samarja for his 23rd receiving touchdown. He was tied with Derek Mays coming into the game. And this one breaks the record as Quinn puts it up top. And Samarja latches onto it for the record setter in a Notre Dame uniform. Let's go to Lewis. On top. All right. All right. All right, Tom. Well, Jeff, take us back to the touchdown that put you in the record books uh, for receptions here at Notre Dame. Uh, you know, it was just a post route. We had uh, Carlson on an end, me on a post, and they just kind of rolled the coverage deep and uh, just kind of got behind the guy. Brady threw it up. And kind of the story of, you know, me and Brady just kind of throwing it up and making plays, and that's just kind of how it goes. And so going 8-1 and one now and having that big win, uh, the big touchdown, yeah. what does this mean to you as your season continues to roll on? You know, not too much right now. I mean, it's more something, you know, you look back on, you know, a few years from now. Right now we're just trying to rattle off some games, you know, get some wins, and, and uh, hopefully put us in a good spot by the end of the year. But uh, we're playing good football right now, and, and uh, we're looking to continue that. All right, Jeff, thanks a lot. Don't celebrate. <laughs> okay, Tom. And I'm sure he will, Lewis, as Notre Dame beats North Carolina by a final count of 45 to 26. Our Von H. Notre Dame postgame report continues on NBCSports.com, where you can watch Charlie Weiss and John Bunning's live press conferences. A reminder, in two weeks, the Fighting Irish back on NBC for their home finale. Brady Quinn's final game at home when they take on Army, presented by Sirius Satellite Radio. Don't forget, tomorrow night, the undefeated Indianapolis Colts take on the New England Patriots on Sunday night football, 8 Eastern, 7 Central time. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, an all-new Dateline NBC, followed by Law & Order Criminal Intent and then Law & Order SVU. So for Pat Hayden and Lewis Johnson, this is Tom Hammond saying so long from Notre Dame Stadium as the Irish win for the eighth time this season, defeating North Carolina. You've been watching the Bonnage Notre Dame Post Game Report. <laughs>